Get a little bro. All right, we are live. Got a bunch of people in here already. Some people moving over from the other stream. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, had a little issue with the link this morning, but we are really, really excited. Right now we're in our office downtown. I've got Taylor right here. He's usually on the other side of the camera um, and doing all the editing and the filming. So we'll be able to answer questions about uh, the behind the scenes stuff from, from filming, um, editing, any of those kind of questions that you may have. And then in addition, share a little news and uh, also um, just celebrate 20,000 subscribers. For us, that's a huge thing. It's virtually all been since the first of the year. This has been a dream of mine for sure for a really, really long time, uh, being able to share our knowledge, our experience, the things that we love with you. And uh, it's been, yeah, it's been a pretty incredible ride to this point. So um, right now, I'll kick it off with, with Taylor. If you want to ask him any questions, put them up there. Actually, I was going to share one, one, a couple bits of news because people had asked earlier. Cool for you? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So um, there was a big announcement this week from the Canadian government that essentially is saying that there will not be, you know, Alaska, Canada, Canada, New England cruises aren't going to happen this year from what, you know, from what we can tell. So essentially all ships up until the 31st of October, we're making a quick video on that. So check that out here in just a couple, couple, you know, days here, uh, maybe tomorrow, I mean, the kids went to work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> haven't seen very many videos coming out, so I know how you guys. Know I don't how do any you editing work, really. No editing no. at all. So, but I'm going to continue <laughs> to talk about it. But we've had a few questions that Taylor has been been uh, fielding himself or fielding himself. I generally respond to some. He responds to some on our channel. So, uh, if you want to answer a couple of those questions and talk a little bit about the editing process, and then we'll say hi to everybody in here and. Uh, Stay tuned today, especially because we're going to do a few uh, trivia giveaways and just a, a few fun giveaways anyways, because we're, we're excited. This is something we've been working for for a really, really long time. I've been in the business for almost 20 years and uh, yeah, just just excited that it's it's working and we're able to share with you and uh, have a ton of incredible new people that I get to talk to and work with every day. So there you go. Kick it off. So the growth, I just want to thank everybody for for subscribing and sharing it with people uh back in december there was no way we knew this was going to happen i mean from basically 100 subscribers to 20,000 in uh, just a little bit over five months that's incredible uh thank you so much thank you for watching the videos i mean they are certainly a labor of love and i actually wanted to talk about a little bit of the behind the scenes we've we've talked about a little bit and I, i've replied to a lot of comments when people ask you know do you cruise on the ships do you you know what, what kind of stuff do you guys do and uh, so I just kind of wanted to go through a day of filming for you guys. And it's, it's actually pretty funny um, how ridiculous it is. Um, so many of you guys know that we film on turnaround days. I'm going to interrupt Taylor really quick. I'm sorry. I do this all the time anyways. But just so you guys know, there, we we're also have the, uh, the SpaceX countdown. I know that uh, pitching other stuff while we're pitching our own is probably not the greatest idea. But it is a monumental historical event, I think. First relaunch uh, or launching of Americans from American soil. Um, in nearly 10 years, but we're going to stop for half a second or turn it around so you can share that launch with us as well. But uh, just letting you know that we will pop in there. So sorry, Taylor, behind the scenes, kick it off. <laughs> well, we're talking, uh, so we're talking about filming day, Danny. So, yes. so what, what usually happens on a filming day? Um, so are you talking about a, um, a, a ship tour? Ship uh, tour. Okay. So I figured we, we could start with Symphony of the Seas. Is that one that makes sense? Yeah. So that's our biggest sure. our biggest video right now, nearly 700,000 views. Thanks for watching for sure. Uh, but the way we filmed the Symphony of the Seas was a turnaround day. So for us, this is a lot easier to get on and get off. Wow, Jeff. Sorry, I got to pause that for a second. Super chat from Jeff. Thank you so much. I Thank really, you so much. Yeah, that, that makes a huge difference. We we're just talking about can't wait to, to get cruising because that also leads to revenue for us and things like that. So this makes a huge difference. So thank you. Anyway, I'll, I'll keep going. And Jeff, as always, if you have any questions, pop them up there, we'll answer them first. Thank you for the super chat and uh, yeah, life changing for us right now. Um, so let's go back to the Symphony of the Seas on a turnaround day. So what happens is essentially we work with Royal Caribbean, we have a filming agreement that we work with them. And then um, essentially uh, we get on the ship the moment it's cleared by authority. So we've come become very good friends with uh, those in charge of um, you know, they become very good friends with those who are in charge of clearing security and also with the genies because we know most of them now from all the clients that we book and then 
uh, having traveled in star class and things along those lines. And so essentially what happens is the moment it goes, we start running. And when I say running, I mean literally running. If you watch some of our videos, you'll see sweat dripping down my brow, like the ultimate family suite is one of those for, for Royal. So basically we have a very tight window so that the room can then get cleaned and then uh, you know recleaned essentially, and then turned over to the guests that are going on. So basically we ran up to the ultimate family suite, um, I don't think we got the Royal Loft on that one um, for, I think somebody was in a back to back on it. Um, the Star Loft, a couple other suites, and then immediately we pivot. And so we stop what we're doing, shift gears. And, and basically, we don't eat. Oh, and we yeah. don't eat. No. There's no time to eat. So it's it's usually a granola bar or a cliff bar for him. And then mm -hmm. we get coffee because I need coffee before we start filming. And during and, and, and after. And we actually get to the cruise terminal as all of the disembarking guests are, are out. So we're actually there usually just in the beginning of boarding yep. and then we get to the, the front of the line and we just we just charge as he said like we charge up to those rooms because the worst thing we can see when we're waiting is actually a genie that that's the worst thing we can see we love the genius but when we're waiting we're we, we know we need to get to those rooms really quick yep. and so if we see a genie coming down we know that they're coming to get the gas and bring them up to the rooms and we're just like no 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 not not the ultimate family <laughs> so we run up and then we finish the rooms and then we, yeah, as, as he said, we usually start with, with the top deck. We, we actually try and actually do, after doing a lot of ships, we have a way that we move around the ships to avoid people. So there's a lot of timing, as people that have crews know, you get on and everybody kind of rushes to, you know, the wind jammer or the buffet. And so we, through doing a lot of these ship tours, we go to the top deck first, because usually people don't go straight to the pool. So we'll usually do the full top deck and a lot of the activities. And then as people start to clear out of those areas for food, so like the Solarium Bistro, you know, the, the Windjammer, and, all, and as they go to their room, so usually about 1, 1.30 when the rooms open up, then we start to go to the eating venues. And while they're still in their rooms, then we'll kind of go to either the promenade or uh, the different public areas that maybe are a little less crowded. And we try to get off before they start the muster drill. Um, we, <laughs> a couple of times, we've been walking through the promenade while they're doing the muster drill. Was that the, was that the Oasis? No, it I, know, the Oasis. I think it was the Harmony and the Mariner. So yeah, yeah, right. yeah, I think it's the Harmony. And it's funny because we're walking through the promenade and there's all these people sitting like in their muster stations and they're just like watching us walk through the promenade. That, that, was, a, that was a pretty funny one. And, uh, and actually, and one of the funny things is people have started, like the first tours, nobody knew who we were. We would just go through, nobody was saying hi, no, nothing. And like now, the more and more we do ships, we'll see people that they don't necessarily want to say hi, but they'll like pull out their phone and they'll be like, you know, snap and pose with Danny. And Danny doesn't see it all the time, but because I'm pointing the camera towards him, I'm watching him like, you know, watching these people behind. Thank you so much, Lori. Hey, Lori. Uh, they, they've got... Um... Uh, two bedroom aqua theater next year. She's yeah. And I, yeah, I want to go with you guys. That'd be awesome. Thank you, Lori, so much for the I'm super down. chat. And I see uh, Andrea had asked about that. Basically the way super chats work is it's linked to your Google account. So you have to have your Google account set up for payments. If it, if you can do it, that's amazing for us. No worries either way. We're just happy to share the information with you. And of course, when I'm looking through this list, I see a bunch of people that have awesome cruises booked with us and it just makes my heart sing for sure. Um, so, but I just want to go back to what he was saying is one of my favorite ships that we filmed is the Navigator. And you guys have probably already yeah. seen that's going to be our premiere next uh, or tomorrow, actually. And one of my favorite parts of all of it is, you know, who's always in the Star Lounge getting ready to head back up there is our favorite Pinnacle member, Super Mario. So got to hang out with him. I've done that a couple of times. We got to hang out with him for a little while um, and just pick his brain and ask kind of office. questions. And, and then also in, in, his in his office as well <laughs> up on uh, his cabana. <laughs> So he's the only uh, person that uh, has a cabana on Royal Caribbean that's permanent for him. So Super Mario lives on the ship. And we've been thinking about him, shot him a few messages because uh, it's uh, it's tough. He lives on the Navigator right now. Obviously, he, he can't do that. So um, but just going back into the ship tours, we also so this is a classic turnaround day. And of course, we always film the rooms on turnaround day, whether we're cruising or whether we're hopping back off as well. 
And so we work with Royal Caribbean ahead of time, set up the rooms that we're going to do. They create a schedule with us, um, which makes all the difference in the world, especially when you're doing uh, star class, because we want to make sure that we never affect anybody's experience except for in a very positive way. And it's been funny because when we've cruised, we've become friends, you know, we're friends with a lot of the genies and um, and some of our clip guests that are traveling in star class. So we've gotten to have a little bit of uh, these unique hybrid experiences through all of that um, along the way. But the other thing that we do is uh, we film um, when we're cruising. So if you go to our Oceana Riviera uh, video, this was a Canada, New England cruise for last year, fall foliage, which unfortunately can't and isn't going to happen um, this year. Uh, but um, there you go, David thank Palmer. You, David. Thank you so much for, for popping in there. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we're, we're hoping we're hoping to get to 100,000 and you guys can definitely help sharing the videos makes all the difference in the world for us, hitting that like button and then uh, having your friends and family as well too. Um, but with that ship, what's interesting is basically we ran on the ship to get all the rooms and suites that we possibly could the first day in coordination with Oceana. But then because we were cruising for a while on these port days, most people get off the ship, uh, you know, unlike a big, you know, Royal Caribbean ship yeah. where, you know, a lot of people are signing up for the ship as the destination, you know, a lot of people are getting off for tours. So when we filmed, it was virtually nobody there. And for us anyways, it was a much more relaxed concept because you guys have seen probably our symphony videos or one of our hour plus long videos and to get, you know, two or an hour and 20 to hour and 30 minutes of usable footage in, in about two and a half to three hours is it's, it's really nuts. And, and we've, what's yeah. been great is we've gotten to talk to a lot of executives from the different cruise lines and uh, add, um, you know, add execs and stuff too. And what they've told us is that what we're putting out is, is stellar quality. And so we, you know, once again, I will uh, toot our horn on, in, in that case because that's all him. That's all Taylor. You very seldom have him in front of the computer um, or in front of the camera. But, um, I mean, you guys see the quality of the editing, the quality of the filming. And, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years, and I've had the same knowledge for 20 years. But over the last year and a half, it's been, you know, Taylor who's helped make this part of the dream happen. I was a teacher for a decade and, and in business for nearly 20 years. But it's really been our channel that's kind of popped us up. That's an interesting comment. So, JMC, have you ever considered doing a live stream while you were touring the ship? Um, yeah, we have, but the issue is that because we want to film in 4k, we would basically have to tour the ship twice. So should, we would probably have to do a live stream with something like a GoPro that can do a, you know, a lower quality stream, um, connected to the phone. But even then those who have used GoPros, the battery doesn't last that long. And a lot of those ships, especially like an, an Oasis class ship, there's no way we're going to get through that ship in one battery. And, you know, depending on how you're streaming internet, there's just, there's just a lot of X factors. And I think it, it, we would love to do it if the internet gets to the point where we can do that, but I don't feel like the tech is high enough yet to do that. But so, so, of, but I mean, just to interrupt, sorry, because I do that from time to time. Um, we will be doing that when we cruise because this yeah. is a new thing. So I don't know if you guys noticed the setting. This is my personal office, downtown Redlands. This is a uh, San Miguel de Allende, some of the incredible, uh, doors there. But um, basically, I I sat down one day and just started the live stream. Uh, it was what we did on my laptop. And so this has kind of been an evolution. But my goal for sure is, you know, when we're cruising on the Symphony of the Seas, the first week of um, the first week of August this year, and as we start to cruise, doing more of these at this quality, yeah. uh, because that's pretty straightforward. And Royal with their Voom internet does have the best internet at sea. So that's our goal too. Is as to long as we it. can, as long as we can have an outlet, something to plug into and then power for everything so that it doesn't drain quickly. I think we can, we can do that. And I, I definitely want to do stuff on our balcony. Well, trust me, I'd love to be talking to you with my feet up and, you know, <laughs> a nice, a nice uh, gin and tonic and, uh, on, the, on the balcony. So we, we will very soon, but well, back um, to the ship filming yeah. thing on the difference between the turnaround days and the ones that I was going back to the Riviera. Um, one thing that's, that's kind of interesting is because we go on so many ships, a lot of times we, we get confused at like where things are because we've been on so many different ships. And even the, you know, the, um, the Voyager class ships, they're a little bit different in where things are. And a lot of times by cruising and being on the ship one or two days and waiting for the big port day where everybody will get off the ship, usually there will be less people on the ship, but also we kind of get our bearings and right. the, the ship tour changes. And because we have more time, we don't have to rush and do the rooms. We have, you know, we can wake up, get breakfast and actually eat, get some <laughs> coffee. Nice. And, nice. <laughs> and then we can actually have more time doing the ship tour. So I think a lot of those ship tours that are done while we're cruising are actually better, especially, uh, I mean, recently the Anthem of the Seas. 
that was one of the last ones we actually filmed. And right. we, we really were able to experience the spaces and then go film them, you know, a day or two later. And I think it really yeah. helped. I think we did 18 videos out of, yeah. out of the anthem. Something yeah, we, like that. So we did the Danny Dines great. and the Coco, Coco K. Wow. Coco Bongo, all of those things. Andrea, that is Thank incredibly so generous. Much. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. I love talking to you this morning too. And your air quotes will be over in just a few minutes. I saw Bruce was working on that when I hopped on to the live stream. So, but thank you so much for uh, the donation and, and for the business. And just uh, like I said, it's been really great talking to you this week uh, and uh, yeah, excited to, to continue to work, work with you. So Javon, can't wait to share it with you. There you go. Yeah. And, and Javon and, and Javon should be on our um, September or our, our August, August 1st, 1st symphony, symphony group. So She's uh, she's going to awesome. be up there hanging out in the coastal kitchen. So we will see you there, Javon. We're we're excited for that as well. Maybe we can get Javon like in the background. I don't know. I mean, the, so know, one like... of the things that we I, I've actually had about ten people ask me this week: <laughs> Can we be in the videos? And the, the truth is, is if you do a, one of our come along cruises, like our Quantum next next summer or Encore uh, Norwegian Encore next summer, uh, even before then, we have the Baltic on the new Stottenbaum from Holland America. But if you do any of them and you want to participate, by all means, we'd love to have you as as part of that experience. But uh, yeah, and the... I actually have a dream for. Um, doing like if we do come alongs on ships we already filmed, I would love to do a second tour where we actually have guests do each individual area. So it's like, oh, yeah. you want to you want to introduce and talk about the the pool deck? We'll put you on, and you'll replace Danny for that segment. Does that mean I get to drink? Yeah, yeah, you could just be in the background. Yeah, all right, that'll be great. I will be in that very very colorful hammock over in the corner, and uh, yeah, there we go. So, but uh, <laughs> no, really really excited, and and you know the. This the entire thing that's happened, you know, to the world, the, the COVID pandemic over the last couple months, it's been brutal on my industry and our industry. I mean, it truly yeah, over 50 percent of everybody in our industry has been laid off. But because of you and the 20,000 subscribers and all of that, we've been able to keep all of our staff. Um, we actually may be hiring here uh, very, very soon. Um, of course, cash flow is tough because when we get paid has changed completely and the reliability of that has changed completely. But for us, the other thing that I just wanted to say thank you and Sorry if I do get emotional, but for myself and my family, you know, we're turning 40 years old as a company um, this coming year. So my grandpa started the business in January. Um, and so 40 years this coming January. And so we'll have a, a huge party next year and all of that. But, you know, it's been tough over the last couple of months figuring out, you know, how do you keep staff? How do you pay people? How do you maintain service level? How do you handle all of these new service requests? Um, you know, when we do a lift and shift with Royal or a price match, that may be five phone calls and 10 different touches that we do with Royal Caribbean on that. So, I mean, there's just been so many challenges, but at the end of the day, you guys have, have been amazing and stuck with us and continue to book cruises. Um, I see several people up here, maybe a dozen people that have star class booked with Royal, another half a dozen that have Haven booked with us with Norwegian. And that's what makes the world a difference to us. And what's been great is that we've been working with the cruise lines to figure out how we return um, as everybody returns and basically how we tell the story. But what's been great from us hearing from all the cruise lines and the travel industry is that they, you know, they want us to remain authentic and tell our story. We're never going to tell their story. And I know a lot of people say that, you know, I'm happy all the time and I like everything. In our trivia here in just a couple of minutes, we'll have some questions on that. I don't love everything um, and I'm pretty honest, but I find that being positive and having an optimistic outlook in life um, does increase the satisfaction level of a cruise, of travel, of everything completely. So and I just want to share that. And I can you. say it from firsthand experience. When he says he loves things, he... He really does love things. Like when we were on the Anthem of the Seas <laughs> and he talked about Azumi, how he would get it actually before dinner. He wasn't kidding. And a lot of times yeah. when we did those Danny Dines, he had a full meal and then we did the Danny Dines. So he, I he, did that for you. He, <laughs> for you. For all of, of course. Them. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Not, not for him at all. No. Just, just for you. No. And, but but it's it's awesome stuff. I mean, what in what real life do you get this kind of stuff? I mean, that's what's great about a cruise. I remember my very first cruise, <laughs> my parents left for the evening and my brother and I were at the kids club and then we went to went back to the room and we got to order room service. My parents would never allow me to order room service at a real hotel. I mean, that's just never gonna happen in a million years. But they came back and I think we had about 15 plates stacked outside because for me, that was that very first thing of you can have what you want when you want and you can have that if you're in an inside cabin or you're in an outside cabin. Or of course you can get all these things that I didn't even dream about back then because I didn't think it was humanly possible on a cruise like with Star Class. So I am gonna pop in here really quick um, moments away from the SpaceX launch. Right now it's at 30 seconds. So uh, as, a, as a history teacher for a decade, I always love sharing live experiences with, uh, my, you know, with my, my students. 
And so we're kind of sharing this as well right now here as two. So let me get this down here. Thank you, Amy. You actually got an email from my wife. She sent you the, uh, the stuff on your hotels. So thank you so much for supporting us and hopefully we can get more videos for you, but let's get to the- Yeah, Amy, launch. thank you so much. I bet Super Chat's incredible. All right. All right, so we're at the 30 second countdown. So my high recommendation is to peek away from us or you know, screen inside a screen or, or another TV, but this is pretty cool. There we go. All right. So it looks like a successful liftoff. That is amazing. I mean, I know for sure I wanted to go to go into space when I was a kid. I'm sure you did too. That's amazing. First, uh, first people wow. sent in space since 2011. So I think this is a perfect time for a little side story as we're watching this. Um, so when I was on the Quantum of the Seas, I was lucky enough to be in uh, Port Canaveral on the on the Quantum. When, I, I can't remember which which launch. This was not a manned launch, but we got to watch a launch live from there, which was so cool. I mean, standing on the ship, I've got a video of all everybody standing there, and you can see, clearly see Kennedy Space Center yeah. from the ships. And in fact, that's my favorite tour to do. And, and Taylor and I got to do it uh, when we filmed and went on the Disney Dream. Is that right? The Disney Dream in And they have that September? brand new Atlantis. Oh, got, you got to see the... Whole, so that's my big pitch for you guys. If you guys do one of those New York round trips or you stop in Port Canaveral, please, please, please visit Kennedy Space Center. They've done an amazing job with it. So still see the, the rocket going up there. We got it off on the side. So we'll get back to you guys right now. But just wanted to share that moment because it's a really cool moment uh, in history. And looks like uh, we'll be having manned space launches again and uh i'm crossing my fingers because uh we 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 have a partnership with with some of these other companies like virgin galactic and uh we we can actually sell space exploration i don't know if you guys knew that and uh, you better bet that the moment that i can get there or at least i can afford it i'm going into space because that's that's been my dream since i was a little kid so cool I'll moment here i'll film it there you go and taylor's gonna film it so <laughs> awesome so right now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn it back over to taylor to talk about um you know Finish up what we're talking about. Do have a question? Okay, I was going to scroll yeah. the top here real so, quick and get those questions. So going. she was she was asking yeah. what the what the best starter camera and software would be for editing. Perfect. And I, I think honestly the GoPro system is really really good. There are a lot of travel vloggers and regular just vloggers that use the GoPro system. Um, they have really good picture. They can shoot 4K. You don't have to. I think shooting 2.7K is a really good way to not overload the computer because. On the flip side, so you asked what software was really good too. You have to have a computer that's fast enough. And to be honest, the computers that I have are on the edge of being able to handle like a feature length film basically right. of 4K. And so I actually. Encore is what, an hour and 45 minutes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was he tough. did do that in 48 hours. Yeah, that I mean, was super short. Yeah, that was wrong. <laughs> um, but, uh, but you have to make sure that your computer is fast enough to handle it. So, I would say start with a GoPro. You can shoot 1080 even if you if you need to. Depending on if you have a Mac or a PC, if you have a Mac, iMovie is a great program to start using. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's free. It comes with your computer if you have a Mac. Uh, there are a lot of Windows programs. There are actually a lot of free programs that will kind of get you started. I use Adobe Premiere. Um, that is pretty much the standard. Right. Um, it's, it may look scary if you get it initially, but it really isn't that bad. I know they have an entry level version too. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles. Um, but getting a GoPro and just getting your feet wet, it's really portable. You don't have to bring a big bag. Like I actually bring my, my carry on. Well, this is one thing people don't know. I don't have so a carry on. That's, that's, that's the one that he actually wears while filming. Many yes. Times. Yeah. I wear that while filming that the camera, there. camera gear. Um, mm. but actually my carry on is a full Pelican case. And I have all the cameras and the lenses and the hard drives and all that. Which can't go underneath the plane. So we always get to put up there. It's got lithium ion yeah, batteries. Yeah, and, yeah. well, and I don't right. I don't trust it. I, I, <laughs> no. I don't want it out of my sight. No, um, but getting a GoPro, it's, it's highly portable. You can, It's waterproof. You can do cool stuff with it. So I would highly recommend getting a GoPro. And, and then once you get into it, maybe something like a Sony 
A6500. Mm -hmm. um, I use an A7R3, which is pretty pricey, but does killer video. Yeah. Um, just anything in the Sony um, spectrum as far as mirrorless is incredible. But yeah, start with the GoPro and start with some type of Adobe software or iMovie if you have a Mac. That'd be, that'd be a great thing to start with. All right, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to the questions here, and we'll answer as many as you guys put up there today. We're always happy to do that. But I did want to just put um, out, because we've had a few people ask, would you consider filming other things? So, of course, if, if it floats, we're considering filming it. We were scheduled to film Virgin. I see a question up there. We'll if it's a Virgin vacation, as soon we'll, as we'll, we'll film it. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd shoot a fishing boat right now. I mean, whatever it takes. <laughs> I, I, like, I need to get on the water. But on the flip side, some of our, our resorts, you, you guys probably know that we're a full service travel agency. Legitimately, my only limitation is your time and your budget. We've done private, you know, private yacht transfers and helicopter transfers and tours and, you know, whatever it is that you like. The, du the double helicopter transfer. The double. <laughs> one, one for the people, one for the luggage. Exactly. We did that in, in Greece recently out to, to between Santorini and Mykonos. Um, some incredible resorts there. So if you want to go to Greece, opening up two U.S. tourists here in the next month or two. But basically what, I, what I'm getting at is we've had several of our land partners, specifically in Mexico and Hawaii, reach out to us about filming their resorts. There's some brand new resorts that we're really excited about, Grand Villas, uh, LeBlanc, Hard Rock, and Nobu Cabo. And so we're going to try to get down there in the next couple of weeks and film those so that we can continue to do what we're doing. We can continue to put out content. But we know that people who go on cruises also like a land vacation here and there. And they have friends and family that they travel with that uh, may or may not be the biggest cruise fans. Um, and so, I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't be, but anyway, it's a different story. So, but basically that's that's coming up from us. We're gonna continue you know, filming in the studio here, right behind me um, in, our, in our other office, but just letting you know that's coming. So see some of our all well, times Dylan, in here. Uh, well, James, he asked, uh, yep. so Odyssey of the Seas, absolutely 100%. Right. Um, also Steamboat Company tours, American right. Steamboat. And absolutely, uh, we actually wanna get on those because they'll be probably cruising sooner yeah. than the big cruise lines. Um, after going to do all inclusives in Mexico, we definitely want to get on those just because a lot of people don't know what the product is like. And we would love to do a ship tour and room tours, just like we do the big companies. So that, I mean, those people that want to cruise right away, we can show them what it's like. Absolutely. And, and uh, we were just for point of reference, we were scheduled to film on American Queen on the Countess, which is its newest ship coming out. So it hasn't debuted. And then when you're talking about the Odyssey, we're scheduled on the uh, inaugural for the Odyssey. And then right before it, there's a really great two day on the Apex, the Celebrity yes. Apex. And to be perfectly honest, I, I'm just as excited to see that incredible ship. We, we, got, we recently suites. sold an iconic suite and an Edge Villa. If you, <laughs> the, These actually make some of the other suites that we thought were beyond, you know, Crazy, but any which way. So Lori, I saw the, saw the, the money and, and in here just saying hi, Andrea, Andrea uh, Amy, GMC, Ryan, um, Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us and the kind comments. Um, got a bunch of people in here saying congratulations. Thank you so much, Ben. It's always great to see you. I think it's been a minute or two since we've seen Ben. Mm -hmm. um, so happy to have you back. I think uh, he's actually in an RV. Fair enough. I think he's in an RV. Let us I know, Ben, and, it, and yeah. we'll, get you, we'll get an update on that right there. <laughs> be great. Andrea, we talked to be in just a minute. Uh, or just a minute ago, Javon, hello. And she's saying hi to Taylor because Javon and I talk all the time. But, you know, there we go. <laughs> Good stock here. Um, let's see. Been here since. Uh, so big. The big two can. Let's see here. Been here since 1000. Excited about that. Uh, Krista, thank you again. Um, Kevin, 15 and counting. Absolutely. I'm, I'm ready. I've been working with Kevin and his family. Uh, I think we've got we got a couple cruises booked for you. And I believe you're joining us on our Alaska. So um, June 14th, Quantum of the Seas, Alaska next year. Um, now I'm getting down to the super chats. Jeff, once again, can't say thank you enough. I really, really appreciate that. Um, Crystal, I love how detailed your ship tours are. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, I spit out a lot of details and he actually has to edit it, edit it down. So I, uh, yeah, any which way. Um, uh, on, on, the the editing, on the editing front, actually, um, believe it or not, I don't actually have to do that much editing on those full ship tours. Uh, when I, between pans and the actual filming of him talking, talking a lot. Uh, I only cut out maybe 20%, which is actually pretty ludicrous as far as filming goes. Like, I mean, and a lot of that that I cut out is the time between the pans because I'll pan and then I'll like walk to the next pan and then pan the next one. And so a lot of that time is there. So actually of him talking, I, we don't do that many takes. I mean, right. But I'd say about 90% of our videos are single cut. I mean, yeah. just without, yeah, because we really, we don't have the time. And we know that if we do, you know, that little tiny piece may be perfect, but we're going to miss something else. And our big goal is to capture yeah. at least, you know, try to get every single public space right. because that's, that's the whole point. And then, you know, we'll get the rooms as often as we can and we'll keep moving back into there. But 
Absolutely. And, and the timing too. Cause we, yeah. we know that if we don't finish one area in time, we may not get the kids club. Right. And, and we know that if we don't well, go the kids club, we have a super tight window because yeah. we can't do it once families are in there. So we, a lot of times yeah. that's our very first thing that we film yeah. depending on the ship and the situation for sure. Yeah. Oh, nice. I see Kevin just said the, the first stage rocket landed. That's one of the great innovations on this is that it's basically yeah. you can use it over and over again. So thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. Cool. Um, and let me keep going on these questions. We've got some great ones. So a lot of congratulations, virtual dinner party on uh, on the subscriber count. Um, Tanvir, thank you for joining us. Uh, JMC, once again, David, thanks again for that super chat. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, Solomon, uh, appreciate that as well. So let's get down. I've got a few questions here. Uh, David says, this has made me want to cruise. That makes me incredibly happy. Um, start with the room tours. Yeah. What we may try to do is we usually have one of our Royal reps with us. You guys have, have been introduced to Vince. He's the, he's the, the, the first and, and umbrella Ali. guy. And, and then Ali, I wanted yeah. to mention Ali. He's one of our all time. So Vince is our, our inside, um, sorry, business development manager. So when I have issues, which right now there's so many complications to every booking, I go to Vince and say, Hey, you know, Lori and her family are awesome, awesome people. This is the issue that they ran into. What can we do about it? And so he's the one that actually helps helps us fix those problems, uh, along with uh, Gary, who is uh, incredible there, and Emily, of course, who I think I talked to five to, actually, I'm pretty sure I talked to Emily more than I talked to my wife, uh, because we've been, yeah, we've had hundreds and hundreds of Royal um, bookings that you have to work through the FCCs and these future cruise credits. The way Royal does it is insane. Well, I'll move on and I'll get back to it. But any which way. Um, Vince so, is also an excellent surfer, too. He is. He is. And, uh, and, a good, and a good cook. There we go. There you go. We're, we're shopping Vince. And he has four small kids at home during quarantine trying to do his job. His wife's a teacher, so she's teaching um, teaching remotely. And so, yeah, four kids. I think they're all under eight or nine years old. But Vince is an absolute rock star. Um, and uh, anyway, always happy to, to, to get with him. And then same thing with Ali. What I love so much about working with Ali on a ship is that Ali worked on the ships and almost yeah. every ship that we go to, he knows everybody. everybody. And so when we need something, it's like, Hey Ali, we need, you know, can you get us into the suite lounge a little earlier than we had scheduled done go up? And it's like, Oh, that was my friend. He was my roommate back when we were first, you know, beginning stewards or whatever. But anyway, Ali is an absolute rock star. I hope he's watching. And um, we had one of the greatest Uber rides. Oh, Uber Bobby. Joe. Uber Have you Joe. been watching Uber Joe's lives Uber... on Instagram? No. no. He's, oh, he's hilarious. He's awesome. <laughs> Uber Joe on Instagram. Awesome. But he picked us up from the Harmony yeah. to take us to the Oasis Shakedown Cruise. Yeah. And so we just did a random Uber. And every once in a while you get this. But uh, he um, basically sang, you know, we, we sang the Air Force. I was in the Air Force. So sang the Air Force anthem, gave us all flags, gave us all gum, everything else. I don't think I've ever tipped an Uber driver quite like that. But I mean, he was just a, 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 a solid human and added to that great experience. But but once again, having all having these people on board makes a difference. Another one I want to mention is Brandy, who's been awesome from Norwegian Cruise Lines. And once again, a huge advantage for us is that Brandy, before she became our sales uh, agent, um, she actually worked on the Norwegian ship. So once again, knows the ins and outs and what to go. Because what we know is that makes all the difference in the world. You know, the very first ones we did, um, basically we, were, we did them on inaugurals. And on an inaugural cruise, a pre-inaugural, what happens is essentially, um, you know, everything's free and they want you to experience everything in two to three days, which is really easy to do on, you know, the Encore or the Symphony of the Seas, um, something like that. So we go on the cruise and normally, you know, you try the restaurants, you go to sales meetings. But what we did is we just went and filmed, and, you know, because all the spaces are open to everybody on a, uh, on a, on a pre-inaugural. And so that was how we first learned. Our very first one was the Joy, uh, the Norwegian Joy. If you go back, you can definitely see some differences in the way we filmed and edited and talked and everything from there to the new one. But we yes. knew as soon as we went on the Joy right after that, people came up to us left and right. were basically saying, Hey, I, you know, I booked this room because of your tour. And at that point we knew we had something great and we were able to go to the other cruise lines and basically pitch and say, this is what it is. But for me, having been on 40 plus Royal cruises, it's a no brainer. It's really easy for me to talk. Cause I'm talking about the things that I know. When I'm, and I'm lucky because people don't recognize me, but he went on a Mexican Riviera <laughs> cruise on the joy. What, what was that? Like four months, five months after we released yeah. it. Oh, Only man. after a couple of thousand views, Ooh, too. Everybody knew Danny. Which, which I mean, honestly, it's <laughs> awesome. It's weird. I've, I've been on over 115 cruises where nobody but a few crew members knew who I was. Like, nobody. And now a lot of people do. So it's a little bit, uh, little bit different scenario. But I'm so excited about that because my wife, as you can imagine, after 100 cruises, she's a little much more of an introvert. But um, she's kind of done talking with me about cruising. I mean, she's like, where am I going? 
which suite am I in? And do I tell the genie or the butler? That's pretty much where she is now. But I get to talk about that with all of you guys and maybe have a drink or two. Uh, didn't mention that somebody uh, was uh, was mentioning the <laughs> the Captain and Coke from uh, from the Encore videos. But yes, I, my go-to is usually a gin and tonic. My dad's go-to is a Captain and Coke. So that Captain was a Coke. tribute to him. Um, Daphne, my husband doesn't like cruises because of tiny bathrooms. Which domestic cruise line has the best bathroom? So first off, if you go to suites, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, like some of these loft suites have, you know, huge bathrooms. And what's been really funny and great with all of this is we've had several new clients that are um, professional athletes that are big guys in general. And in fact, I had a day where I had six calls where everybody was over six foot five, um, either the person calling me or their spouse was. And uh, a lot of people have said that they really appreciate me getting into the spaces and showing what it looks like, um, you know, there. And so do that. But, um, you know, reach out to us because this is something that I specialize in and I know really, really well, but I can walk you through the process and there's some secrets and some, some workarounds that we can do for you too, to get you those rooms if you physically need them as well. So sweets, easy solution to that problem. So let's keep going down. Well, and, and I would Go add, ahead. and I would add the, um, the size of the showers. Cause it, I don't think she was specific on the size. Right. Um, you know, Danny talks about it, but any, <coughs> any suite that has a bathtub or any room that has a bathtub, combo with a shower that's going to be way shorter and i'm you know i'm six foot i'm not you know crazy giraffe over here um but you know i i get in those and i actually struggle to get under them sometimes yeah no and, absolutely sorry and, i just saw a comment that was pretty funny Go yeah yeah so <laughs> so any anyone that just has a shower um so specifically like for instance the voyager class ships they just a lot of them just have a shower and i actually fit really well in that we were on the anthem of the seas and actually our shower was, I mean, yeah. you, you pretty much fit in it. It was a standard balcony. Yeah. So if you, if you're looking for a shower that will fit somebody that's tall, definitely look at one that doesn't have a bathtub. Absolutely. And like I said, there, there are several other workarounds too. And we're happy, you know, basically there's a lot of cruise lines out there and many of them specialize in rooms that are just more spacious. So we can, we can always work through that with you. Happy to do it. I just saw a comment from Perry saying maybe, Danny's wife can host a cruise for introverts where we'd all go together in one of the lounges and just read quietly. Sign me up for that. She is a quilter and an incredible one at that. So she would absolutely love that. And uh, she she's basically been totally fine with social distancing. In fact, what she's told everybody that she knows is that she's been training her entire life for quarantine. So, um, but any which way, I mean, we're all, we're all different in that opposites attract. And she is uh, my other half for sure. And, and fills all those. And, and with my daughter, it's great for her to have two different personalities uh, to, to raise her and have all of those pieces of the puzzle. But we would love to do that. And my wife does go on our come along cruises, of course, and uh, she would be happy to do that session only. And when it comes to introvert cruising, Danny really does know where all the places are to hide. Um, oh yeah, and he'll talk about it. sometimes in the tours. Like this is a good place to come during the day. Yeah. Well, it really is because he'll he'll move from spot to spot because he knows when they get really popular, and he'll just hide with his laptop and and book for you guys. So a lot of times when you're when you're emailing him, he's actually sitting in, for instance, uh, an evening restaurant on the Oasis. Oh yeah, sitting in there. Or, or the, the waterfront is awesome during the day when nobody's sure. there on, on Norwegian. And then you get the outside. Yeah. I like to pop out on uh, Jamie's Italian on the quantum class is my favorite because they got the little outdoor seating area. And the other side is the smoking area. So it's not on this side. But there's very few outdoor spaces like that. Well, in Alaska, you were always like outside sugarcane, mojito bar. Oh, yeah. On the yeah, outdoor seating. Sure. And just as Alaska's going by and there's nobody around because it's because everybody's inside and it's cold and they have blankets and heaters. Stop. It's... I'm missing my view. Oh, Leave me alone. Sorry. Stop that. I want to get on a boat. Torture. Want to get on a boat. Okay. Uh, let's get a few more questions answered, and then we're going to do our trivia here in just a second. Um, but there we go. Uh, best cruise videos I've seen. Makes me really look forward to the Mariner. Absolutely. September. Good luck with that. Um, let's see. We've got uh, Rahul. Thank you so much for uh, checking in from India. Um, wherever you guys are, let us know in the comments. We always love to know where people are streaming from. Um, we just did a, a breakdown yesterday, and about 70% of our audience is American. Yeah. About 7% is UK. About 6%. Australia, New Zealand, which makes sense, English-speaking countries. Um, and global, then, global's growing. Right, our global it, it is growing. Much, it was much higher than that, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. We, I mean, I, I love thinking about, you know, I wish I was in Sri Lanka right now watching my own videos. Actually, I wish I was anywhere right now. But anyway, <laughs> let's let's keep going there. Here we, got, um, we got an Orange County person. There we go. We got I love Denmark. it. The OC Floridian went to Daphne. I went to I went to school in Irvine for a couple of years as well, and uh, spent a lot of time with the mouse at Disneyland. Missing that greatly right now. 
Uh, Umber Fire, 40K for 40 years. Well, I certainly hope it doesn't take us that long because I turned 40 in two years. So any which way, but excited there. Um, oh, wait, sorry, 40 years as far as the company. I'm an idiot. All right, I'll, I'll leave that. But yes, I do turn 40. So maybe maybe 40 years for me, we can get 100K. There we go. Love that. <laughs> I'm special. Natalie, hello from Scotland. Hello right back to you. Uh, JMC, some of the best cruise videos I've ever seen. Thank you so much. Your videos put uh, Star Class on the map for me on my bucket list. Joey, let, when you're ready to book that, let us know. Uh, best company, thank you. Uh, Amy, once again, thank you so much. If you had any more questions, Amy, on the filming, Taylor's happy to answer them. But thank you so much for that super chat. Um, Caroline, I uh, love all, how you share all those family moments in your videos, especially love hearing about your grandma, grandpa's love story. Thank you so much. It was, it was great sharing it. And I will continue to share those. Um, she's referencing our Memorial Day live stream. I talked about my grandma, grandpa, um, and why you should always travel with every generation that is in your family, because you never know. Um, you never know when that's going to be possible. People have work and jobs and life and everything. But I, my favorite memories from traveling are with my grandma and my grandpa and my sibling, my, my, my brother. Um, most of my favorites. Sometimes, you know, we went at it just a little bit. Um, and then, of course, uh, my mom and dad and everybody, but uh, all of these great memories. So we'd love to help you put together multi-generational. And what's great about cruising is, you know, on, on an Oasis class ship, you know, maybe maybe grandma and grandpa really want to do jazz on four and have uh, that, that music experience or the sweet experience. So they have a quieter, relaxed, more boutique. Uh, mom and dad, kids have different needs. So what's great about cruising is that everybody's needs can be met. So thank you so much for, for mentioning that. And Appreciate actually on that, that multi-generational thing, I, I, yeah. I did a seven, well, actually I did back-to-backs, um, but we did Norwegian and we did Disney last summer and we did it with Danny's family and then the Disney cruise we just did with Danny, myself and his daughter. And it was, it was very interesting to see um, my eyes were open to what the cruise line was doing for, for right. his daughter. And it, it, it actually, it, it changed the experience for me. Cause it's like, I, I noticed things that I wouldn't have noticed before. And I was anticipating things that I wouldn't have thought of before. And just to see the way the cruise lines adapt and just do so well for, for everybody. It's, it's great. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I mean, and, and, for me, this like we we did we actually did back to back to back. Taylor didn't do the first one. Sorry about that. But uh, we and did Crystal. Crystal. Yeah, it, it didn't allow me to go on Crystal. No, no, okay. Somebody was busy, <laughs> not me. Because um, we did Crystal. We wanted to do the different Alaska experiences we're sharing with you. So we did Crystal followed by Norwegian, followed by Disney. And it was, it was awesome. But uh, Alaska is our place. And what I love about cruising around Alaska is there's always something to see. So even my daughter, um, I had somebody comment the other day, I'm not sure if you saw that, that um, I look happier and, and more, and I have more smiles when I'm touring Royal Caribbean than on Disney. And in some cases that's, yeah. that's the case. <laughs> that's totally true. But what people have no clue about is when we did the Disney wonder it, Taylor, I mean, Taylor, my, my three-year-old daughter, and I shared an inside cabin. So kudos to him. He doesn't have any children. And uh, he did for that week. And uh, he was trying to edit with my daughter, climbing all over him and putting him in headlocks. And they, they did have a lot of uh, wonderful I, I think Lego he, moments. He, he's more worried about than, than I, I am. I, oh, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. He was, he was an it. awesome sport. But what you don't know is if you go back and watch our Disney Wonder video, <laughs> My daughter did not want to go to the kids club that day as planned. So legitimately, I'm, she has an iPad. I'm pushing her around, running back, doing the segment with her yeah. in the distance. And I can see her out there and then run back up and talk to her for a second, push her forward. Yeah. And then it started raining, which is always easier yeah. uh, to push around a child. So anyway, <laughs> we had some pretty pretty good uh, moments there. But but what's, what's great for us is it's great having Taylor on camera right now, too to share some of these behind the scenes. Cause we laugh about this stuff all the time and we love that we get to share it. And then of course, if you go on one of the come along cruises that we're hosting, you'll actually get to see us filming around the ship. So, it's, it's been some time. So I think we could, we can laugh at it more, but yeah, yeah it was, there, it there's was, def there definitely were some moments. Let's just say it was incredibly <laughs> stressful. Two of my employees weren't able to work that week. So they were off. So it was just me booking, managing everything. Cause we've grown considerably since then. So anyway, I, I, and, there were, and there were a couple of scenes that are actually a lot of times I had to cut out because we would be touring something and then his daughter would get out of the stroller and like run to him. Mm -hmm. And we were, oh, okay. All right. All right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, was, yeah, we learned a lot. But once again, I mean, every tour that we've done, we've learned um, and we've grown. And so, of course, I, I you know, I, I actually prefer that wonder tour just because of the memories I have. Yeah. But the dream is a little more in depth and, you know, there's other pieces of the puzzle. Of it, but uh, anyway, we, we we love making the videos, but it's it's 
it's interesting, I think, for you guys, because we get a lot of questions about it, to share what it actually is like to sprint around a ship and get three and a half hours of usable footage in five hours. Because not only that, but you're covering distances and, you know, Taylor has to oh, run ahead he's or broken. run back. He's broken half the time. Yeah, you guys may or may not know oh, this, but in, in October of this year, oh. I was playing with my four-year-old nephew who is built like a brick house. I mean, he's, anyway, he's the same age as my daughter, but 25 pounds heavier. And I tried to throw him and he went the other way and I went. And so I actually herniated a disc in my back. And uh, when we did the, I'm going to get it right this time, Lace Champlain. Lace Got a Champlain. few emails of people telling me that I don't know French. And I don't. Sorry. Anyway, different story. Um, but uh, <laughs> that whole ship tour, every step I took was like a lightning rod of pain going up my leg. Um, and then, of course, I had two weeks before that, I tore my meniscus. So every tour that you see, <laughs> every tour that was from November through now, yeah. I was basically limping around, adjusting my knee brace taking a break here and there to, to sweat it out and breathe. When he would, um, he would have to pump himself up for like the take. Cause it's like, Oh, I'm in pain. Okay. okay yeah, I, I, I turn, turn on the face. You I know? basically <laughs> should have bought stock and ibuprofen. I'll put it yeah, that way. Yeah. Cause uh, that was, uh, that was the only way we survived. But once again, what's cool is going back and looking at this now. And for us, we actually did it in the perfect timing, the perfect amount of time. Um, we got, you know, we got off, we got on the, the Anthem of the seas on February 24th of this year. Uh, we flew home from the Bahamas on the 28th, I think. And then our last ship Euro tour that Dam. we filmed was the, the Euro Dam on March 1st. Um, yeah. So, but we got all that in and we were lucky enough to have, I mean, Taylor and, and my wife are absolute saints because we were essentially gone from November to February filming. And so that, you know, that's why we have the Navigator. We've been able to put out all this content during quarantine because we just, we literally sprinted, would film three ships in a weekend. Um, in fact, we even went crazier with Norwegian where we flew... <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did three ships with three stops. So we flew in and we actually met with the, the Royal staff. Mm -hmm. um, we were supposed to film on Royal. We weren't able to do it in that situation. So we went into the headquarters and spent time with them. And then um, we, the next day we filmed the escape in Miami. Then we flew to New Orleans, New Orleans. where they were having the Mardi Gras. I, th this Great. is how good of a travel agent I am. I'm like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I got this incredible rate. Well, of course the hotel, which was a beautiful hotel, the Renaissance yeah, Arts awesome. District yeah. in, uh, in New Orleans but it's right in the middle of the Mardi Gras parades and it's raining. And so you can't get an Uber or a taxi. And anyway, this, this is the fun, the fun stuff that we deal with all the time. And of course, the night before I left my bag with all my toiletries at the hotel in Miami. So I had no hair gel. Nothing was open. We couldn't he, even he does get out. That a lot. Um, I heat. do lose yeah. things all yeah. the time. Um, and so, you know, you, you might see a different hairstyle. I, I actually have some videos where I'm wearing not only Taylor, but Taylor's wife's sunglasses. Um, I think the Crystal Symphony, I stole her, yeah, her yeah. sunglasses because uh, because I lose things all the time. But anyway, just some fun stories. Let me get a few more questions. We, we do want to get to the trivia. We want to give a few little prizes away right now. Um, American Queen Steamboat, we talked about that. We absolutely will be filming that. Uh, when do we think, do we think cruises will be back in August? We do. Yeah. Um, we're, we're scheduled to sail on the Symphony of the Seas the 1st of August, and we fully plan on taking advantage of that and going and, and hopefully filming. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying, like, you know, we're, you know, like, there was one comment that was like, oh, you're company men. But to be honest, like, seeing all the cruise lines put in place, and they're starting to announce what they're doing, uh, at least for, for us, mm -hmm. we really feel like they are going to cruise in August. Um, obviously, you know, reduced capacity. There's going to be a lot of stuff we're going to find out. But just hearing the plan, because so many of these cruise lines, it's all logistics, and what are they going right. to do? And the fact that they've had this time to actually plan, you know, they haven't just been sitting and waiting, you know, they've been, you know, planning, you know, talking with, with all the health organizations and getting everything prepped. And so, you know, what that tells us is they're, they're getting ready to cruise and we're really excited because um, I, I really like filming on cruise ships and we like cruising. And um, sometimes I actually enjoy doing the filming more than the cruising as crazy as that sounds. I still love to cruise, but um, I, I'm just, I've become such a cruise ship nerd because I, I love going on more. Ship. Like I would, I love the weekends, which they're crazy and stupid. And then he's broken where we fly in and do like a ship every single day and then fly out. Um, that's actually a lot of fun. It like breaks me because I'm holding yeah. a, you know, a 30 pound, you know, gimbal with the camera on it. Yep. Uh, but, but it's just fun to see all the ships. Oh, I mean, obviously I'm a nerd. I've been on over 300 river and cruise ships and I'm going to keep going. And as long as they keep making them, I'm going. And I am a company man in the sense of I own my own company. It's a travel agency. I tell you what I like. 
our clients like what we like usually, and we're honest with them and we tell them exactly what's going on. And so for me, when I tell you unequivocally, I can't wait to get back on a ship. I truly mean that I can't wait to get back on a ship. And I believe it's going to be, uh, continue to be one of the safest ways to travel in any, you know, any type of travel in the entire world for so many reasons. Well, they were so far ahead anyway. Right. I mean, those of you that, that cruise, I mean, you, you go into, right. you, I mean, they're making you have hand sanitizer. I mean, you right. go, when you go into restaurants in your local city, I mean, they're not doing that. Right. Um, and no, just all, now, but, yeah, yeah. But, but a lot of the health policy, sure. so they just were ahead. So right. I'm, I'm sure that they'll be. Right. Well, and, and, and I mean, basically what we've seen is other industries are going to the cruise industry and asking them to support and help and advise. And they're kind of, it's a big collaboration, but all the hotel chains and all these different companies, they've never had to step up. Yeah. To, to this level. I wish they would have a long time ago, to be honest with you. Uh, but now we're going to see it. And in my mind, traveling, you know, I know this is going to be tough for a while and there's going to be a lot of changes, but I think traveling is going to be a better experience in the long run because of all of this, um, for sure, cruising. I mean, everything else, we'll see what happens. But we got a ton of questions rolling in here. So I do want to honor that real quick and answer a few. Um, do you plan on going on the Wonder of the Seas and when will it come out? So right now, the Wonder is scheduled to be built for China, for the Chinese market. Looks like the Chinese market might actually start cruising. Um, the cruise lines in China are actually bringing staff back now, ramping it up in the same way that Shanghai Disney has, has had uh, consumers there for the last couple of weeks. So um, we'll see what that looks like. But I believe the wonder will get delayed. I mean, it's it's in the St. Nazar um, shipyard in France. Um, and what they're doing is they're probably intentionally going to slow things down so the capital outlay slows down. But uh, it's definitely going to come out. The keel's been laid. It, it's far along. And the Odyssey, too. The Odyssey is going to come out. It may get delayed. I really hope it doesn't uh, because I really want to do that back to back that we have scheduled on the Apex and the Odyssey um, and get that to you. But continue on with the questions. Uh, Javon, how does the sofa in the grand suite of the symphony turn in? to a bed. So it does have a pullout section on there, uh, but keep in mind, you can always ask them to make it softer and more comfortable. Um, they can use the egg crates. Um, and one of the things that we do sometimes is we'll bring a, a blow up mattress for my daughter because she loves it anyways. And it's really easy to use um, and really easy to do. And she find, you know, we find it more comfortable. It's got like the rails around it. It's called a, a shrunk, I think is what it is, a shrunk, something like that. But um, anyway, we, we, my daughter, we traveled with a dock a tot with my daughter since she was little and then moved to that because what we know uh, with the amount of traveling we do, if she has that bit of continuity, it's even better. But they definitely, it does pull out and then they make it up for you, Javon. Um, and since I'm pretty much always sleeping on the pullout, I can I can attest to the fact that true they, they can they can always make it softer and it just always ask always ask because the pretty much uh, other people have asked that same question and they're ready they're ready with the solution. Well, I think I've told this story possibly on a live stream, so if you've seen again, forgive me, but one of my first bookings that I ever did was a carnival cruise to Alaska on a honeymoon. And um, they, they, this is exactly what they wanted. We went over all the details. They were really excited for it. Um, went on the cruise, came back. Um, you know, this was pre-social media, really. Um, and and uh, I was like, how was the cruise? And they said, oh, it was great. It was the best cruise we've ever been on. But it was this really funny thing. They wouldn't let us sleep in the same bed. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? Check the record. Of course, I notated to put it together. In fact, the cabin steward decorated the room for the honeymoon. But oftentimes they don't see the note or whatever, and the the beds are separated. Well, all you have to do is ask them to put it together. But this couple on their honeymoon, um, I won't, I don't know what else they did, but they slept in separate beds for seven days. And uh, what was really funny is when they got back, she said, "To be honest with you, it was actually kind of nice." <laughs> so anyway, Ricky and Lucy, I guess. But there we go. Um, James C, I know a hotel you might be interested in, Margaritaville Resort in uh, Hollywood, Florida. I was actually just at the Margaritaville Resort in Hollywood, Florida, right before this, um, when we were getting ready for the encore that night, when you were yeah. when you were uh, editing the encore, I took uh, an Uber over and stayed and visited some friends that were there and had uh, some wonderful cocktails out on their little faux beach there. Um, let's see, Tay and Queen, when do cruises start back up again? We're thinking uh, so, or, uh, August first is, is the target that we're looking at. That's what all everything says right now. Um, D money is the mini bar and the Haven class staterooms included or pay to use. It is not included. Um, if you have certain packages, you can get certain things, but, uh, it's uh, one of my beefs with NCL, to be honest with you. I think if you're in the Haven and you pay the upgraded package, you should get everything all the time. Um, but changing around a little bit on there. Um, uh, Danny, do you think Royal Oasis will sail from New Jersey in August? I really don't think that's happening. I mean, the tri-state area has been absolutely hammered. 
um, with, by, by COVID and everything related to it. And I think for the cruise lines, they're going to want to start with a very small subset. And in my mind, that makes a lot more sense. I mean, Universal Orlando is scheduled to be open in a week, a week from yesterday, a week from today, a week from yesterday. Um, yeah. And so it makes a lot of sense that it's going to start from Florida. But the question is, is what are they going to do with the Oasis? So um, maybe they reposition the Oasis and start the Caribbean season earlier and sell it. I really don't know where that's going to go. Um, I just can't, can't see New York being one of the places they launch from. All right. Well, I mean, if you look at what Carnival did, like they are going to focus on Galveston and the ports in Florida. So I, I would, yeah, seeing the, that the Oasis is going out of New York or New Jersey, I, I, yeah, I just don't, I don't see that happening right off the bat, but who knows? Right. Maybe, maybe by the holidays, they, maybe they do keep it there and they, they just start sailing later. But yeah, I don't see that happening at, at the start. Yep. No, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> Carolyn Hall watching from Florida. Let us know and get on that cruise right away. Long Island, Vegas. All right. There we go here. Wow. Got a lot of awesome comments today. Um, here we go here. Watching from Texas all the way from India. Love the, the perfect day video. Thank you for watching that. Um, fellow introvert married to an extrovert with extrovert sons. I love a video where to hide. So we, we try to mention that we'll do a lot more of that. And maybe I, you know, I think I'd love to make a video on that because I know my wife would, but she would get upset with me because then you all know where she's going to hide. So, but anyway, I, I, we'll, we'll work on that, but you've already I, given up her location. The, the easy you've given up her quilting location. Actually. Yeah. She did. She did quilt in the, the, um, the, what is it? The, oh, shoot. Now waking out on the, on the Norwegian joy, the Republic, not, not food Republic, but what's the bar? Is uh, it Brew Republic? Ah, anyway, I think the was, was public brew house. Maybe anyway, oh, one right, of them. Like that's that. great because okay. it has light coming in from the roof, and then also uh, Food Republic as well. Yeah. So you know, any of those venues that are dining during the day, they're they're awesome because they're not utilized, and so that's where you'll find us. But also the music venues, the rock room, district brew uh, house. district brew house. There you go, perfect. Rock room uh, on Royal, but these are all perfect places to hide and escape. Um, there we go. Here, De hey, welcome from Virginia, Pennsylvania. Cruises, uh, there we go. Um, Doug from Concord. How's it going, Doug? Um, our other small office is based in Concord, California. So if you book a flight with us, it's going to be processed in Concord. So fun side note there. Bruce, who is absolutely the best in the business uh, on the Rock Star. Oh, yeah. That's what he's been Star. doing it for 35 plus years. And uh, we do handle flights, hotels, pre post, tours. Legitimately, our only limitations are, are set by you. Um, we go here. Uh, Brandon, uh, need advice. Seven night on the Disney Wonder to Alaska or four night on Disney Dream to Castaway. Sailed on the Wonder. So for me, a seven night on Disney is always better than a four night because I, you know, one, the, the character meetings, all of the stuff that happens on a four night, it gets consolidated down. And you probably saw that on, on the two that you did, but people are rushing to do everything. So seven night is much easier. Also, is this seven night uh, Alaska? Seven night Alaska, yes. And, and Disney is, Ooh. is, Disney's perfect in Alaska. Yeah. Because they get up close. Uh, they have the best docking positions. Um, they've been there consistently the longest with the same ships. Um, and so they, they, but for me, it's more about the seven day experience. Um, and, you know, twice for the, uh, you need to do all the restaurants twice, which is phenomenal. Animator's palette. You get two totally different experiences. Um, so I would always do the seven day. Uh, and I personally prefer the smaller ships because I feel like um, on the bigger ships, there's more people trying to share similar experiences like the characters and things like that. So to me, 100 times out of 100, the one I'm eyeing right now, I'm not sure I can talk anybody into going with me on it. I uh, just for the length of time, 16 night on the Disney Wonder. It's the first Christmas time cruise and it goes through the Panama Canal. So and Phenomenal that's an value. interesting question because I actually did both of those with Danny. So we did the, yep. the Wonder in Alaska and we also did the Disney Dream to Castaway Cay. And, and I think, you know, the Disney experience is going to be the Disney experience. It's going to be awesome. You're going to have the characters. Um, the Dream does have more things to do on the ship because it's bigger. I, I don't like the flow of the ship as much as the Wonder. Um, it just kind of, it has some weird corridors that that turn uh, right. around the Bippity Boppity Boutique and around kind of the, the promenade area in the middle of the ship. It's just a little strange to me. Um, so I, I wouldn't really choose it for the ship. I would choose it for the destination. Um, Alaska, I, I mean, I don't think it's a mystery. We love Alaska. And honestly, the, the way they have their promenade deck um, on the outside of the ship, I mean, I, I was doing jogs actually around the track, and because theirs goes all the way around, yeah, you you were definitely you, you definitely no, go ahead, we're, we're not. Um, but just going around that promenade deck and just like looking out and seeing Alaska, it's it just absolutely incredible. Um, same thing, the you know Castaway Cay is key, 
K, whatever, uh, Coco Bongo. Um, so, <laughs> uh, just in case you're wondering, I was on an executive call and all the royal executives were calling it Coco K. So there I'm, you go, there you go. It's Coco K. All right, I all know right. it's Coco. Uh, but Cast Castaway Key, um, it, it's if you want that island experience, that private island experience with the the palm trees and the drink and the oh, pineapple, special. like all this stuff. I mean, it is incredible. So if you want that experience, that that you know Caribbean experience with the private island, definitely do that. If you love wildlife and the outdoors and the beautiful waterfalls and glaciers, do Alaska. Don't necessarily base it off the the ship. Base it off of the experience. Yeah, and and for me on a parent side, what I find is that the smaller ships I think are better for the younger Agreed. kids oh, yeah, because you have more and, and longer cruises. So if you have a you know one to eight or nine year old to me the smaller ships are far superior oh, yeah. because and, and a longer cruise because a wonder you, on the panama canal right, right. And, and young, i mean younger yeah. kids aren't quite as as patient as, as well not teenagers aren't patient what am i talking about anyway um but with with younger kids especially what's great is they're going to have multiple attempts and so maybe the first time they're a little overwhelmed by the character greeting or or one of the meal experiences and so they'll have a, a, a you know, more in-depth experience with it. older kids. The new technology is phenomenal on, on the new ships. And for me, I can't wait to see the Triton class or the Lighthouse Point because, you know, Castaway Key was built a long time ago and it is a, you know, one of the first, I mean, it really set the standard for it. Now, Coco Cay has totally obliterated that in my mind. I mean, it, there's nothing like it in the industry, not even close. And right now for the first sailings, what we're really excited about is, you know, when you normally would have two ships, you're probably gonna have one ship. So, Coco K is going to be wide open to those who cruise early on and I uh, really love it. But Lighthouse Point from the Disney is going to take all the Disney Imagineering, all the experience that they've learned running a cruise line for the last 20 years and building it from scratch. So, I mean, that's going to be pretty monumental. Well, and, and the rapport that that the kids build with the characters. Yes. And not, not just that they're overwhelmed, but the rapport. Because it was funny because uh, – is his, daughter, his daughter would just tickle all of them, and so like by the the third or fourth day, it's like, oh, you're the you're the tickle one. It was a, it was uh, like, I, I I'll never forget Tiana coming up and seeing oh, Ava God, running Tiana. at her, and Tiana's like, oh, there there's little Miss Ava, and just covering herself up and then giving her a hug. But basically, when my daughter was about two and a half, she was you know she got in this like tickle mode, which you know as parents we we do, but um, unfortunately she is head size with every male cast member's crotch and then all the female members would sit down and uh you know any which way so uh but but it was great because they knew her she knew them and it wasn't a negative thing at all it was kind of a, a smile and yeah. a laugh and but she became comfortable with these characters over a period of time and then what i found is when we went to disneyland the next time it was like game on like i'm yeah. not a not afraid of anything and, and if there's a, a, a ride or something to do it i'm in so it was a, a pretty funny moment so let's get through a few more of these really really quick um, Jake, I did wave at the camera for you. So there we go. Um, going on an Alaska cruise this year with my grandfather. Looks like we'll have to book next year. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's the case. But reach out to us because we can definitely help you book your next cruise. Um, would love to do that. And if you have future cruise credits, of course, we can we can take care of that for you as well. Um, should be leaving for my Alaska cruise tomorrow on the Jewel. Uh, wish, wish you were and wish we were with you. Um, Kevin, congrats on 20,000 subscribers. Do you think masks will be required on board when cruises resume? So this is probably the, the number one question that I've yeah. been getting over and over again. Now, what I can what I can say is I believe unequivocally masks will be required for those who work on the ships. Yeah. Going around my local town, uh, Redlands, California, a lot of things are opened up right now, but masks are required for everybody behind the bar, working yeah. with food, all of that. So I, I imagine that that's going to happen. What I've seen so far and what I think is initially it's going to be optional. You know, we'll see. Maybe it is, maybe yeah. it's not. For me personally, I have no problem wearing a mask. I really don't. Um, I think there's different spots where it makes more sense. Others, maybe that in corridors and things like that, I choose to wear a mask. In the open deck areas, restaurants, I don't. I don't really know. So this I can is all see boarding. Speculation. I, I could see during boarding right. a mask being requi yep. required. I could see that. Yeah, or or tendering. Or I tendering. That. Yeah, something like um, that. Something. But, but once again, I mean... I, I, I believe we're, we're going to know. We're going to know in a couple yeah. weeks, right? But I, I believe that we should look to see what's successful on land to figure out what's going to be successful at sea. Once again, um, Universal's opening up in a week. Disney's opening up in about five weeks. And we're going to see the lessons from them. 
that are learned and they'll move forward into this entire process. So well, well, I, will, I will say Royal also, they patented the, the, the name, C-mask, the, C, the C-mask, C-face. So I, 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 C-face. Would, I, I would take a custom Royal Caribbean mask with the, the Oh, totally. Royal I love, well, I mean, so cool. Disney has masks out. I mean, we know for yeah. sure at the parks, they're going to require that. And, and once again, the parks are a different atmosphere than a cruise. And so it makes sense that they will require them there and may possibly not require them on a ship. So we'll see. But, um, you know, ultimately what's great with, with Royal Caribbean, Norwegian right now is, you know, if you have a cruise coming up in the next three or four months, you'll have the choice of, yeah. I don't feel comfortable with the way it is. And so I'm going to go ahead and cancel this cruise, keep all my money as a certificate. And then I'm going to rebook that at a time that I feel comfortable with it. So, And, and as we said earlier, whenever we find out that information, we're, we're going to relay it instantly to you guys and we're going to try and be on those first cruises so that we can show you guys what it looks like and kind of explain the experience and how it's different from what you may be used to so that you can make that decision on whether you want to cruise this year next year or even postpone to, to 2022 right, i mean just to fill that in one thing that we do know for sure is that early on the it's going to be lower capacity i've, I've heard anywhere from 45 to 55 percent as a target from different cruise lines uh, but in my mind, that's going to greatly enhance the experience to start out. I mean, I, I we were on we were lucky enough to be on the Oasis of the Seas for the Shakedown cruise, and that was about fifty percent capacity, about three thousand. Uh, and I mean, it was it was a better cruise experience, you know. But I, but but as you were saying, yeah. we were talking earlier. Um, we think that's going to be top down because most of oh, the yeah. suites are still full. And there's not much availability in, for instance, in Royal Caribbean and Star Class. Right. But you know, as you kind of go down to you know the junior suites and you know the um, the regular balconies and stuff, so it actually they may just push everybody up and, and upgrade. Right. Like I don't see inside cabins being full. Right. Well, and and one of the big questions, and we're going to make a, a video on that, yeah. um, is what you know what's going to happen? How do they get to fifty percent? Are they going to have to kick people off, or you know what's what's going on with that? And um, what we've seen overwhelmingly, I just pulled up inventory for the, um, I just pulled up inventory for Harmony. the Symphony of the Seas. I think, yeah, Harmony, Harmony sorry, Harmony, uh, the, yeah. the 2nd of August, because we have some clients on there, we have some clients on the, the 9th of August as well. And what I saw was all of Star Class was gone, completely yeah, gone. The two bedroom grand suites were gone. Most of the bigger suites, the owner suites were gone. They had a couple crowns, but, right. but not much more. Absolutely. And then everything below that, there was 10 or more, you know, cabins available. Yeah. At this point, that would all be gone. Yes. All will be gone for a summer symphony or harmony sailing for sure. So what I believe right now is that we're already below the 50%. And so they may even give an option for some people to move from other ships that may not launch and go there. I don't know. All speculation will continue to speculate because, well, I mean, it, it's what it, it's fun to do, but it's, it's also, fun, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, trying to answer your questions and give you the best guess based on our, uh, our educated opinions from, from all that. So uh, let's continue on here because we're backed up a ton. Uh, my wife and I booked in a, uh, a bedroom, two bedroom rock theater suite. Um, this is Jack Wilkinson. I think you guys booked that with us. Uh, thank you so much for that. Worked with Katie, I believe, uh, and myself. Uh, but what can the genie do? So the genie's job is to surprise and delight you. So about two to three, maybe four weeks prior to departure, the genie's going to reach out. They're going to ask you all kinds of questions to learn about you as a person and try to figure out the things that you like. You're going to have very straightforward requests. Like I want my diet peach Snapple uh, in the room. I want my extra elite coffee. Um, you know, we want the, the egg crate mattresses on the, on the, in the guest room, whatever it is. So you make all those requests, they're going to make those happen. But throughout the entire cruise experience, the idea is that they're going to surprise and delight you along the way and blow your mind. We've done lots of unique and creative things, uh, with wedding photos and, um, experiences with the cast members from Greece. We did a, a really cool thing, proposals, proposals, um, you know, anniversaries, big parties, uh, within the suites themselves. So, you know, let us know what you're looking for. We'll, we'll, we'll work through that. You know, for our bookings, we're happy to, to help you through that process. But And we, in, in talking with the genies, you know, they, they actually, it's funny because they, they actually get frustrated when, when they, like, don't get enough information. Because right. they, they want to do things. They want to do cool stuff that surprises you. And, and they're... And they're not a concierge. They're not like a. They're not a cabin steward. They're or even they, a butler. They, or even a butler. Like yeah. they work with those people, right. but their job is to like go above and beyond. Right. And just some of the stories, like the, you know, they found out that it's a kid's birthday and found out. I think they like looked on the Facebook and found that they like pirates and the, so they erected this huge cardboard like pirate ship in the room. I mean, right. just stuff like that that you don't ask for, but if you just kind of hint 
that you like this or you like right. like the stage shows and maybe the cast members. But if it's a celebration, please ask us for it. Yeah. Just, ask, just clarify. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> they're they're gonna do that. But if you know you want something and we can make it happen, we want to make it happen for you. But I mean we've done princess birthday parties, you know, in a grand in a royal loft suite. Um, I just I have an, a, a really awesome family, the Hamiltons. They booked the the royal loft suite adjoining to the crown loft. So we're gonna work on some really incredible things because they've had two cruises uh, canceled and, and also being in the military, thank you for your service. Um, you know, the last couple months on base have been nuts for so many people. So we can't really, you know, we can't even begin to thank you, but also we want to do some really cool things. So reach out to us. You want to surprise your spouse, let us know, and we can make those things happen. But keep in mind things that exist on the ship that can be utilized, like a bridge tour, a behind the scenes tour, uh, the, the cast members of a show. Those things are much easier for us to make ha things happen with than something that has to be brought on from outside the ship, but it can be done. So once again, We'll work with you on that way ahead of time. Go. Um, JMC, have you ever done the Empress of the Seas? Uh, we haven't done a ship tour of that, but that was my very first cruise in 1990. Uh, I was on the Nordic Empress, which is now the Empress of the Seas. I would love to film that ship just for nostalgia, you know, totally just for nostalgia. Um, there you go, because it's, it's probably going to leave the fleet at some point. It was really brought back for Cuba. What we're dreaming and hoping of is uh, that, you know, situations align and that Cuba opens back up because – our Cuba cruise last year on, on Azamara was was absolutely the best. Uh, see a comment here, people asking uh, to to hit the, hit the bell. I always forget. Please subscribe to the channel, of course, if if you haven't already. Hit the bell for notifications, and it would be really awesome because the last live stream we got over a hundred likes on there, and it wasn't even quite this long. So if you don't mind liking, we would love that because it makes all those things make a difference for YouTube helping us to you know show you the channel. Uh, let's keep going there. Um, Carnival Cruise, we would love to do the Mardi Gras. We're working on, on that right now. We'll follow up with you on that. Um, how many more ships do you have on your list? Um, all of them. All of them. If it floats, we we're going to film it. Like I said, I'll, I'll, film, I'll film a dinghy right now, like just a little – my grandpa's old fishing boat that we have in the backyard that has a little a little Evinrude mo motor and uh, is about 15 feet long. Well, let's do it. I'm in. Um, actually, I was talking to some of our local restaurants yesterday about some Danny Dines. But we'll, we'll figure that part out. Okay. Okay. Um, Sam checking in from Michigan. How's it going? Um, do you have better rates on cruises booking through uh, through a travel agency? So 100% of the time, it is to your advantage to use a travel advisor. If you have a travel advisor, give them a big hug as soon as that's allowed. But give them a big hug, virtual or real, and, and let them know how, how much you, know, you appreciate what they do. Because this has just been brutal. It's been, to be honest with you, it's been terrible. I'm doing three or four times the amount of work for not even getting paid yet. Uh, that's where we are right now. And, and frankly, it's, it's a bit depressing to constantly unwind the things that you meticulously build. I mean, we, some of these itineraries we've spent months putting into them with people, they're dream trips. And you know, they're safaris. multiple times. Right. They're, these they're are safaris times, yeah. and these are, you know, intricate itineraries to Asia and Australia and all of these over the top things. And it's depressing as heck to, to unwind that, but it's what we do. And what I know more than anything is that more people will book with travel advisors after all of this than did before because you've seen when you book online and you click a button and you don't get a real person, you get what you get. And, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, if you if they don't answer the phone for 10 hours, you're not going to get a hold of them. For us, we have a very easy way that you set a calendar appointment with us. And usually I'd say 90 percent of the time within 24 hours, one of us is going to get right back to you. But more than that, we want to build that relationship. So to go back to the question. You are leaving money on the table if you choose to book direct. 100, 100 times out of 100. You're paying more money in the long run when you do it. We have group rates um, on thousands perks. of bookings. We have extra perks, amenities. You know, I'm not going to pretend that if you book a, you know, a small inside cabin, you're going to get you know, all these crazy things. But based on what you book, we'll be able to enhance the experience. But beyond that, when you call us, you're, you're dialing into our experience, our knowledge, our connections. And so yesterday I was able to fix some things with Royal Caribbean that a client had been working on for three months that couldn't get done. They transferred the booking over to us uh, because it, it made sense for them to do that. Um, and they were an existing client anyways. But, but long story short is that by working with us, I was able to solve a problem in about 30 seconds that they couldn't solve after months and months. And that's just because we know what to ask and we know who to go to and we know how to do it. So anyway, well, and so. I would, I would take it even a step further because you have, you have the, you know, the price component, but with us being on all these ships and you know going from ship to ship and filming, we really do understand what each product is for and what and right. who somebody would identify a product. So with using a travel agent, having that knowledge of you know talking to the person and going, what do you want? What would you like to have on your cruise? And then hearing them say, oh, well, I like this. 
well, maybe the product that you're asking about right. isn't the right product. Right. And when you book direct, you know, their goal is just to get you on their boat. And for us, you know, yeah. we, we have no problem selling different products. We have no problem right. saying, oh, maybe you don't want that ship. Maybe you should go up to Oceana. Maybe you should go up to region yeah. or taking somebody from, you know, one of the bigger brands and going, well, actually, you know, maybe you should try out this ship that goes to Coco Cay. Cause what you're t saying sounds like you want that Island getaway. Right. Um, so, you know, having somebody who knows the multiple brands and will give you a breakdown. Uh, I mean, that's a real advantage and that's what travel advisors are best at. Yeah. No, I mean, I, 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 I uh, Clea, the cruise line international, you see them referenced a lot. Um, but I, I've been a master Clea master cruise counselor for 20 years now. In fact, I was the youngest one ever. And the reason I did that was at that time, I just wanted to learn what was out there. I really truly didn't know. And by touring these ships, I've been given a wealth of knowledge that virtually nobody else has, because I don't know. I actually don't know anybody else who's been on 300 plus cruise ships. And for those who don't know, he would actually go on cruises and then in cruise ports, instead of going in, yeah. He would go to the ship that's docked right next to it and just go in and look. Right, the 17, 18, 19 year old me who was a huge <laughs> nerd and loved what I was doing. I mean, I remember you, before 9 11, you would just hop off. I'd show him my travel agent card, I'd leave my driver's license, go spend the whole day on the ship, and that was totally fine. Unfortunately, it doesn't work quite that way. But what we're drawing on is all of that experience. Bruce, who has 35 plus years booking with the airlines, worked for the airlines, worked at the rate desk. So when they tell him that I love, I love when they tell Bruce that he's wrong. And, he lets them know that, well, no, you, you got to turn the page because I'm right. And I used to use that rate, that rate desk uh, sheet. But anyway, anyway um, so we've got that. We've got Katie, who's been on the supplier side selling travel. In fact, that's how I met her. And now she's skydive in, in the middle of yeah, the Caribbean. We, we gave her the baptism of fire. It's exactly. like took her on a ship. Day, day four of working at uh, hard travel. She was filming and, uh, and skydiving. And then, of course, Cindy on the back end, she's been running data for major school districts. And so we have an amazing staff. You know the work that Taylor does. It speaks for itself. That's why you're here with us today. So, I mean, we have incredible people. And so when you book with us, it's a lot more. I mean, to be perfectly honest, if you only want me to beat a price, I would probably recommend that you don't reach out to us because for us, it's more about establishing the personal relationship. I'm sure I can beat that price, but that's not what it's about. And, and for me, I want our relationship to be on value, um, added value that we bring, added value that we we bring by explaining what you're doing. If you, hey, if you turn right, when you get to this alleyway, you're going to find our favorite coffee shop in Rome, which I had walked by 300 times before Taylor found it. But anyway, that's a different story. If there's a coffee shop out there. I'll find it. He will find it. I'll find it. Um, but we're giving these things that what our clients tell you, they're, they're, it's a measurable value. Because if you miss something on a vacation that you really wanted to do, you may not ever go back there to do it. And so that's the kind of things that we do is we try to listen to you and create the experience that you want that's even more um, you know, above and beyond clicking a couple buttons. If you want to click a couple buttons, go do it. I challenge you to try to get them on the phone right now. I mean, they're, they're, these, these companies that are only sales-based, they're struggling. Many of them have laid off almost all of their staffs. Those who are service-based, who are taking great care of people, answering questions, you know, we're not miracle workers, but, but we try our best to get everything done. That's where the success has been. And so that's what we've seen some great success. And in fact, this month is our number one month in business in 40 years, which uh, you guys are live. So Thanks let's continue. So I, I don't want to miss any of these questions. We're an hour and 15 minutes in, and uh, we've got about 30 questions lined up here. So let's dig through this here. Um, can't wait for you guys to do the Odyssey of the Seas um, tour of the owner's loft. We would love to do that, but keep in mind if you check out our um, quant or sorry our, our anthem of the seas yeah, owners loft, it's similar. almost identical. The decor will be slightly upgraded, the spaces will be a little bit different, but ninety five percent of that same exact thing. So you know if you're booking that, that's what you're getting there. And the Odyssey is moving along, moving along. Um, let's see here. I already booked a cruise. Um, do you book flights? Yes, for our clients, we do have we do flights pre and post hotel uh, transportation to and from the cruise terminal. Basically, any and everything that you need beyond that, we're happy to assist with that. Sorry, take a sip here. Those hiccups are coming back. As well as excursions. We'll also do, uh, like, you know, if you don't want to do it through the cruise line, we can do some more boutique options and maybe smaller groups or right. personal guides as well. Yeah, private, custom, I mean, yeah. how, however you want to do that. Um, actually found some construction photos on the Wonder Online. The Aqua Theater is all done, but painted. Um, and the suite complex is all done. Yeah, it's moving along. And once again, the Odyssey is in Germany. And the Wonder is in France right now. So they're two different shipyards. And Allure um, is in Spain. And the Allure is in Spain getting its uh, undercarriage worked on because the uh, it's had propulsion issues forever. We're, unfortunately, it's not going to get the big amplification. And I am crying a little bit for that. But once again, I mean, check out our video. It still looks exactly like that. The Allure I'm is hoping it will still get the Abyss. 
because they technically would have the pieces built. For I, I just don't think they're going to spend the money on it because it's not a it's not a return on investment. Yeah, we'll see. There, there's no revenue that comes from it. I'm still hoping for the abyss. That's, yeah, that's I, a fun slide. It's going to happen. Yeah, it just probably it's not yeah. going to happen with this. But anyway, which way? I love the optimism here. Um, we have Norwegian Sun, October 24th out of Port Canaveral. I think it's got a great chance at running. Um, Royal Caribbean will focus uh, more boats in Galveston. So, yes, but I don't know if you guys saw the news. The, the Galveston terminal will not be built now this coming year. It's going to be pushed back. It may be that the Allure does not come to Galveston when it's scheduled. We've seen some hints of possibly the Anthem going there, uh, which could make sense with yeah. pushing the, uh, you know, the Allure could even possibly replace the Anthem run up there in New York. Um, we don't know for sure, uh, but I think Galveston will be a, it, it's, it's been one of the fastest growing ship ports for a long time. It's a great one. It's very convenient and Texans love to cruise. So there we go. It'll be on. And we're going to film. The I would love to cruise with a bunch of Texans. I would too. In fact, oh, when, man, you, when, you, when you cruise out of Galveston, I don't know this. I, I haven't seen this on any other ship. They have a big Texas flag in the middle of the promenade because, <laughs> you know, if you're going to cruise from a different country, yeah, you know, the, yeah. the Texas Republic, you got to do that. But we actually... Um, if you talk to Tracy, who works for us, or Katie, who works with us, um, they're they're in Chad, they're they're in Texas, and our company's headquarters is actually based in Dallas, Texas. Okay, Gary, Terry, Gary, yeah, I can't talk. Good. Care to make a guess on the ships, ports, routes NCL will use for the return? I'm guessing Sun, Encore, maybe Bliss as the first ship. So um, I would agree with you there. So what's interesting is I don't think we're the highest revenue ships that Norwegian have will start sailing. So the question is, you know, we know that the big money's in the Encore, the Escape, the Bliss, and the Joy. I mean, those are the, the Breakaway Plus class ships, also the Breakaway and the Getaway. So those would be the ones I would look to first. But, but maybe, but it just, it's just it's so hard to tell because I, they're not going to go from Seattle as scheduled. No. They're not going to go from New York as scheduled. And so do they pull them and bring them down to California, which probably won't happen either? Do they move them all the way through and just bring all three of them to Florida? Um, I really don't know. In fact, Norwegian is the one that I'm most perplexed about. Because with Royal, their high revenue ships are already in places that make sense. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see uh, what is going to happen with that. But uh, thanks for that question. Um, is it Mila, uh, Malia uh, or Malia? Maybe um, Hubs. Your hub <laughs> husband is six foot four. Love seeing where he fits. I love that. Um, Bank of Chase. Yo, Jason. Uh, we should do a podcast. Maybe at some point. I think right now for us. Gosh, we're, we're busy. I just, I would actually really, really love to see my family. So, yeah. um, and uh, we'll be doing that hopefully. Even doing the live streams, here. the only time we can do live streams around the weekend. Right, exactly. It's, it's so tough. we would love to do a podcast. We've talked about it. We'd also love to do some different kinds of shows. I'd like to bring my dad in, who has a totally different perspective. He's been cruising with me for over a decade. Well, three decades now, uh, but I love his perspective for being a retiree. Uh, so we have a lot of great ideas out there that we'd love to do. But frankly, um, we also are a bit understaffed right now, but we, we need to wait until ships start sailing so that we can get back there. So all of us are working, um, you know, 12, 13 hour days right now uh, from Taylor to Tracy, to myself, to Katie, uh, to Bruce. So, uh, but we would love to do and that. My wife. Thank you so much for that. And uh, Kate, who uh, came on, his wife and my wife, Kristen, you may be talking to one of them now because literally it's ha it's all hands on deck. And as they finish their school years, because his wife works in education, my wife works in education, um, they're coming in and working for us. So they're not getting their traditional summer break, but uh, promise you, and we've promised them that we will make it up in suites going forward yes. for the foreseeable future. And uh, lots and lots of, uh, of crystal in our, in our future because our wives are, uh, are pressing us really hard on that right now. Um, Chase joining us from White Rock, British Columbia. Thank you. Uh, Margaret coming in from Sacramento, uh, from Denmark. I've spent quite a bit of time in Denmark. We have some great friends who live in Denmark. Pamela Barber, always love seeing you. My all-time favorite Come Along Cruise dance partner. Here we go. I was just picture Every time I think of Pamela, I have this flashback of that little casita palafito over the water in Cuba where the guy's bringing out the guitar. Oh, yeah. We yeah. each had a oh, few yes. dozen mojitos. And we were just dancing. In fact, there's a great picture of it on our Facebook. So, uh, Pam, right now, your Mexican Riviera cruise is scheduled to go in October. We'll follow up with you if that changes. Um, but right now, it is scheduled to go. Um, and once again, we'll follow up with you on that. Um, Pam, uh, on your Royal Caribbean Alaska, this is a great question. Royal Caribbean Alaska cruise, Pam wants to know if she can bring her sewing machine along. So that is going to be a come-along cruise for us. My wife has brought her sewing machine on multiple cruise ships as a carry-on. I don't think that's going to change, uh, but uh, you better believe, Pam, <laughs> that she's going to be on there with her, her sewing machine as well, too. So you guys can quilt up a storm in Alaska. All right. 
Um, haven't done the Majesty yet. Would love to do that. Hope kid clubs on cruise ships will reopen. Um, I think they will. And, you know, right now, like I said, my daughter's been back in school for almost three weeks. So don't quite know what that looks like. Um, don't, mind marrying, mar don't mind wearing a mask. Um, that's, that's awesome. Let's see here. Um, I, I would not go on a, go on a cruise if I had to wear it the whole time. I don't want my vacation to be like, like that. So, I mean, once again, totally up to you for those who love cruising, they may just overlook it. Um, because that's, you know, anywhere you go, that's, that's pretty much what the world's going to look like. But once again, right now, Royal Caribbean and the others have said that you won't be required to wear a mask. So we'll see. We, we really don't know what that's going to look like. Um, looking for an inexpensive Royal Caribbean cruise. Um, Absolutely, positively, lots of great options out there, especially closer in. We booked ourselves. Um, yeah, so Jasmine, reach out to us. We'll see what we can do. Some cases we can help you, some cases we can't, um, but just reach out if you have that. Um, Want to go on a cruise where I can spend as much time exploring the ship as possible. So um, some people might believe that that would be on a, uh, a cruise with a lot of sea days. I would go the opposite. To me, I love the days everybody gets off the ship. So Baltic, if I could do a seven-day ba cruise. Baltic. Baltic, your Baltic story. <laughs> Oh, Baltic is perfect. I mean, we, we did back to back to back Baltic and we spent two whole cruises where we never got off the ship. But in these areas where, you know, Europe, people do more excursions than in the Caribbean, than in Mexico, than in other places. Uh, Asia, they do more excursions. So if you go to one of those places and you stay on the ship, you're going to have a lot more ship time. That may, you know, for somebody like me who's done it multiple times, it makes a lot of sense. Maybe not for everybody, but uh, pick one with lots of port days. Everybody gets off the ship, especially Coco Cay, Labadee, um, and uh, go from there. Um, I want to go, will shows on all ships be different when they start up again? I think the shows will be exactly the same, but they'll probably do more of them uh, because there'll be less people in the audience. But with less people on the ship, that may just translate to the same amount of shows more spread out. But I have really, really long legs and it would be really, really nice to have extra leg room. So I'm fine with less people in the theater. Let's keep it that way forever and ever. Okay. Um, you charge extra for booking flights. Some travel agents do. Um, and Jason, in some cases we do. For domestic flights, we usually do have a $25 fee, but that carries you throughout. But a lot of it just depends on the unique situation for you. Um, but what I would say is, um, you know, in the past, I've always told people, you know, we, we have a lot of value when things go wrong. Well, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the last three months, a lot has gone wrong in the world and with travel. And as of today, 100% of our guests who have had flights canceled, we've been able to get them their money back, a true refund. And we've done this very strategically um, and working through it. So for those passengers, they've told us that um, they, they will never not book a flight with us again because Bruce is up there managing and monitoring this every day, guys. Bruce had a queue of about 170 reservations that's now down to about 30, I believe. But he was monitoring them every day to see if the cruise line made a change that now you have a more favorable um, ability to rebook or cancel, but we handle all of those. And by handling 100% of your cruise needs, if something goes wrong or you need something, we're here to help you. All yeah. Right. And, and just that, you know, going through menus and calling the airlines and trying to get the right person on the phone, it, that's difficult. A lot of times it's like you shoot a, you shoot an email or, or call us. It's, it's, we have Bruce. Uh, Bruce is just, he, he, Bruce. Wor he works magic and just his ability to see something and go, Oh, not only will we can do this, but we could do A, B, C, D, or E. Right. Which one do you want to do? No, I had one the other day that we were looking at, and it was Lufthansa. But by booking it as a United flight, you know, the client had actually seen the price um, and, and said, hey, can you match this? Which is, is common. I mean, once again, what we do is we'll take four or five options. We'll chunk them down based on your preferences. We'll hold them and send them to you for you to decide on. But he was able to tweak it and change a flight time put in another United flight in the segment and it reduced the cost by 1200 per person. So just these little tricks in, of the trade that we do. And also, you know, knowing, understanding certain airports and layovers and all of that, that's what we specialize in. So my, my thing would be, uh, you know, your time is probably better, more valuable spent with what you do and what you specialize in. And, you know, when I need plumbing, I call the plumber because you should see the work that I did myself. And when you need flights, um, you call Bruce. Yeah. And when you need an electrician, I actually, <laughs> I arced a screwdriver to a box and went flying. Since then, my wife does not allow me to do uh, electrical work. But anyway, wait. So, just uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll skip that. I did learn how to uh, how to fix certain electrical issues. But believe it or not, just because everything in the box is turned off does not mean that the power to the box is turned off. Lesson learned. Uh, uh, Texas Fry got some people who, who loved our Texas comments. Texas fr Pride is big, of course it is. Um, Dallas, your home city. Uh, Perry, aren't the Encore and the Bliss in Norfolk right now? 
Um, no NCLs waiting on the West Coast except the Joy. Actually, I think the Joy left LA to repatriate crews in the Philippines right now. So I don't think there's anything so, on the West yeah. Coast. But keep in mind, guys, basically from the US, from Europe, any ship can get where it needs to get within seven days. You know, a, tra a normal transatlantic's five days. Um, so moving through the canal actually could be a little bit longer, but of course those ships were meant to the West Coast. So we don't know um, what that's going to look like, but uh, what I was talking about is more where they were scheduled to cruise from, not necessarily where the ship is hanging out right now. Well, and they've also had, as going back to the fact that they have had, had, had time to plan, they've had time to plan. Mm -hmm. So, you know, depending on where where the ships are now, doesn't really matter. Right. Cruise lines have A, B, C, D, E, F, Q, F, Z contingency plans right now. And that was one of the things that I appreciated. Um, a lot of the news, like, we, you know, we love Royal Caribbean blog. Matt does an amazing yeah. job there. Um, but one of the one of the news places where a lot of people uh, such as him and others are getting these news are the, the talks that Royal Caribbean and different cruise lines have been having with travel advisors. And we were lucky enough to be featured um, amongst, you know, there's 5,000 travel agents watching, but Royal Caribbean gave us a huge shout out. And they love that they've been hearing from a lot of people that uh, basically people have been tuning into our Coco K videos and having right. virtual cruises themselves. And, um, and the, fact, cru the cruise news as well. Right. And, and the cruise news as well. But it was great. Um, Vicki Freed, who's the, the vice president for Royal, she posted a picture of myself and my family at Coco Cay from 1990. And then a picture with uh, uh, Taylor and Kate, uh, Katie and myself there just a few weeks ago, a few months now. Months, feels yeah. like a few days ago, actually. Just, yeah, it it's, been, it's gone so fast. But it also feels um, like a lifetime. But what's ago. been great is they're taking the information that was shared directly with us. And then you know chopping it down. So we we follow along with those. We learn what's going on in the industry. And in fact, several times we've been given given shout outs on that. So it makes our our heart sing uh, when Norwegian and Royal have let us know that uh, that what we've done has been a grip a very big positive. Because just for Royal, uh, our, our believe it or not, I was just tiling it up. Um, our our YouTube fans have spent over 25 million minutes watching Royal Caribbean with a 97% like rate. So it's great for everybody. It's great for them because we're telling our story. You're watching it and you're enjoying it and booking cruises with us. So it's a very symbiotic relationship. So we really appreciate that. And it's because your comments and your feedback that we get that access and uh, we get to uh, to share with you all these, these awesome things. Um, is the Mardi Gras going to be done in November? So you guys have probably seen the Mardi Gras has already been pushed back. And in fact, I had a client who has um, a suite booked on the Mardi Gras for a middle of November sailing that all of a sudden is an inaugural. You have to choose to want to be on an inaugural sailing, guys. Because yes. remember, this yes. is the first time when all the crew members are coming together for the very first time. It's like opening a restaurant or a hotel. I won't book a resort that is at least not you know two months old is usually yeah. my minimum. And I usually go back to four months because... A lot of times there's construction issues like in the, you know, Mexico, specifically the Caribbean, um, you know, manana literally means three mananas for now, but that, that's a different story. Um, we've had, we've been burned quite a few times actually from resorts uh, specifically in Mexico for that. So, but what's this interesting conundrum is that he now has is I didn't sign up for an inaugural cruise, but they canceled a couple months for the cruises. Now I have it. So he may move forward, but we're hoping to be on the, on the Mardi Gras in mid November to film it because it is a very innovative ship and does things that, nor that uh, Carnival never has uh, ever before. So we'll see what that looks like. What? Um, all right. So uh, Eastside Dog, as part of your services, do you monitor book to cruise fares? So we we do periodically monitor fares. When there's a new big sale, we, yeah. we try our best. But if you ever see a better rate, email me, let me know. Sometimes you'll get a targeted promotion from Crown and Anchor, or you'll, you'll get something else that maybe, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a police discount that we didn't even know that you had. And you didn't put it on the form when you signed up. What I mean, this stuff happens. But if you ever see something, just shoot at, shoot us an email and say, say Danny, you know, I'm pretty sure that this uh, went down. And uh, we've, I, I'm going to say I've probably done 2,000 price reductions since the first of this year uh, because things have changed a lot. And what we're actually seeing is the opposite. So Royal had this great lift and shift yeah. promo, and a lot of people booked, thought about it for a couple of weeks. And then as the scenario changed, they moved that cruise. Uh, because of that, Royal's actually raised prices first August, September, October, uh, to kind of eliminate that. So we're not seeing that uh, right now. And a lot of what, what's what's great is that cruises are selling for Royal and Norwegian. They're actually up from this point last year. And in many cases, they're selling at a higher premium than they were. So, I mean, that's for those who don't cruise, that's, that's mind blowing. You turn on the news and you think the entire industry is done. It's gone. It's over. And what I, legitimately all day, every day, I am booking brand new cruises for those who want to go on a cruise. Yeah, and we're, we're definitely not exaggerating. Like, we no. want to get on cruises bad. Mm -hmm. And you talk to people that are, are avid cruisers, 
They just really want to get on a cruise ship. And, and those are the people who are booking. And that's why there's so many bookings because there are people that they're frustrated that their cruise got canceled this year. And so now they're rebooking. So now you've almost got like a double booking for next year. Yep. And so the ships are just full. They, they are. I mean, the suites are gone. Like there are no star class suites on the symphony next summer. Gone. hundred percent. There's a few star lofts, but if you have a big family or a family of more than four, it's a tough, you know, that's not the perfect room for you. Yeah. Um, but there's some interesting insider tips on that. You know, one of the things that Royal Caribbean did for us as travel agents, because we screamed loud and it was really hard for us, um, was, you know, we're booking these cruises. We're waiting for future cruise credits but the booking is going to expire before the credits come. And so they let us extend options for a lot longer than they normally ever do. Yeah. But by doing that, what's actually happened is they've taken a lot of space out of inventory that people may not book. Um, they may decide you know, to, to move it. I've had several people that had bookings canceled and then they decided to book a different cruise. You know, they, they want they, that Royal Loft opened up, um, just did that for um, uh, very, very recently for, um, oh, what was the family I booked yesterday? We're oh, working on it for the Fernandez family um, right now. Um, but they but they have a star loft right now. They're, they're working on that. But what we're seeing over and over again is um, that, you know, it, it's I don't know, it's, it's, it's really hard. You know, they've created these workarounds. But what we think is there's just going to be this huge amount of inventory coming back over the next couple of weeks. So we've waitlisted everybody who wanted to be waitlisted. But if you're thinking about that star class and it's gone right now, it's very likely it's going to be here this week, next week or after June 30th, which is when we expect the next round of future cruise credits to fully be played out. So just something you want to keep to sum up everything you just said, it's really confusing behind the scenes, but if there's something that you really want and you're really interested in a specific date, definitely hit that contact form that we pin, say what you're looking for and we'll do our best. We'll do our best to find it. Absolutely. Um, East side dog, $10 uh, super chat. Huge. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely monumental. If you have any other questions, let us know. We'll answer them. I'm going to get through two more questions here and then we're going to do a quick bits of trivia here. Um, all right. So, uh, Perry, so eager to get back on board. And uh, heck, yeah, I'd cope with an inaugural as long as the bars are open. I'm with you, uh, Perry. That's awesome. Um, but to, as, an, as an introvert, my question is, do you get your drink and leave the bar or are you good with just the one on one relationship with the bartender? Because I was a bartender for, for quite a while. And uh, um, I found that a lot of my, my my introverts like sitting at the very ends of the bar, having a short conversation and then me leaving them alone completely. So interested to see how you feel about that. Um, we have a cruise book for Hawaii, November 20th, Star Princess. Rumor is Hawaii is not expecting cruises until 2021. We got a great video on that coming out yeah. here. Or actually, we covered that in our, in our last cruise news. So yeah, tune in. It's already posted. Um, but, you know, Hawaii and all the islands out there, they have to decide, right? We They can control COVID. If they don't bring people in and they screen a very, you know, they're, they're down to about, I think they said 3% of the normal amount of people are coming in on aircraft right now. Um, you know, that small amount, they can monitor, they can test, they can you know do all the things that they need. But as soon as they open it up in mass to tourism, you know, no matter what, the, you're, you're exposing people to the possibility of, of COVID traveling. But that's travel anywhere in the world right now. In fact, I think Disney summed it up best by basically saying, if you go into a public place right now, this COVID is out there and it's in our world and there is not a vaccine quite yet. So you have to know that. And there are some people that have, you know, major health issues that should stay home and, and may have to stay home a lot longer. And I'm, I'm very sad about that. I feel very sorry for that. But at the end of the day, you're going to make the decision with your doctor based on you reading, please, please, please don't rely on the news as your only source. Read what the CDC puts out there. Read what the World Health Organization puts out there. Read what the cruise lines put out there. Go directly to the horse's mouth and figure out what they're saying. This is what I did as a history teacher. I told everybody, I told all my students, you know, learn everything and put yourselves in their shoes. That's really hard to do. Put yourself in somebody else's you know, position. But this is what you're doing now. And you're going to have to put yourself in, in, in a position to, will this work for me? Maybe, maybe not. Will this work for me in September? Maybe not. But it could work in January. So you're going to have to decide what that looks like and for especially you. with you know with a family with my family being uh, filled with a lot of medical professionals uh talk to your local your local medical professionals because they, they really do know you know especially your doctors they know your health they they can advise you and especially in your local area they can advise you of, of what to do and what precautions to take yeah no 100 percent. i mean I, it, it's going to be a personal decision and what i'm saying is we will never endorse anything with, with you know, a blanket endorsement in that sense, because you're going to have to choose. If I choose to go, that's me choosing to go and know that it's after a lot of research, a lot of questions, a lot of answers um, and, and a lot of consultation with uh, with our medical professionals. And, you know, we have several in my, my family as well, too. And we 
I mean, guys, this is what we've all been talking about to everybody over the last couple months. So um, Perry, Perry takes a drink elsewhere. So Perry, I love that you take your drink elsewhere. So here's a little a little bit that I wanted to, to share with you, Perry, is um, Princess has their medallion class. And I'm really excited oh, for yeah. it. Um, Royal will be getting there very soon yeah. with, you know, with the technology that they have. And they may be pushed but, for that earlier, actually. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It may make more sense because essentially this could be a solution for crowding at bars, crowding at different places. So the way the medallion class works with Princess is you get an RFID chip. You can, you know, they have all kinds of swag you can buy. You can get a nice Swarovski, you know, watch kind of thing or whatever and, and put it in there. But I mean, you do what you do. You can also put it in your pocket. It doesn't matter. But it's an RFID chip that, use, that you use to open up your door, right, um, in, in that sense. But what's great about it is that they have sensors everywhere on the ship. And it, you use an app on your phone, but it, it's a smart app. And so essentially what it does is it trains the app to know what you like. And so if you're Perry and you like, um, you haven't told us your drink yet, please feel free to share it. But if you're me and you want that uh, Tanqueray 10 and tonic and you want it at the second window on the left uh, on, the, on the promenade, right? They know that now, not just from you typing it in, but they know that from your location using your RFID chip. So essentially um, what happens is that, um, you know, you put in the order on your phone and maybe you walk back to your room. You know, maybe you go to another location. They're going to bring your drink, your meal, your food to you wherever you are. Talk about the ultimate introvert solution. Um, and, and the other great thing is, um, you know, when you have a genie, you just message your genie and you can text them. You kind of have the same thing. So we'll talk more about that. But I just I wanted to share that with you. Um, see another question from Ray asking about 20 to 40 percent capacity. Um, so two interesting facts from the Royal Caribbean. Um, I don't know if you guys ever listen as a stockholder, right? If you have over 100 shares, you get an extra onboard credit on, from Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Norwegian. They all have that. Um, but if you tune into the stockholder briefings, you get a lot of information. In fact, like the last one, some information gets out of the bag before they wanted it to yeah. because they're answering questions. But basically what, um, you know, what Jason uh, Liberty and... Um, uh, Richard Fain, I think, was the one that was on that. What they announced or said was that Royal Caribbean's big ships, these Oasis-class ships, believe it or not, they can turn a profit at 30% occupancy. Of course, if it's the right occupancy, it's going to be heavy on the suites. But what that means is if they get up to 40 50% on an Oasis class ship, they're, they're turning a decent profit. Of course, you know, there are other expenses and lots of other ships out there. But the other interesting fact is on their older ships, what they said was um, it was 50% capacity to, to basically break even and start turning a profit. So what, what may be that they really release those newer ones earlier. Um, and then when they can get to 60% or 70% occupancy based on what the CDC says and what's happening land side, then at that point, maybe they tweak those metrics just a little bit. But but we'll see. Um, Crystal found a great rate for two rooms on Royal, 30% off. Sale ends tomorrow. We want to book with you. Should we wait and book with you? Um, uh, and uh, so two things. One, you can go to our contact us form, hit it. Um, if you know exactly what you want, put your names, dates of birth in, in the information. I'll hold that space for you immediately. I'll do that for you really quick. Or if you need to book it, you can still transfer it over to us. They allow transfers within 60 days and in some cases others. Um, but sometimes our clients do get in a bind like that because it's you know late at night on a Sunday and you see something. But go ahead either way and you decide. Um, maybe do both. Book it and then uh, shoot me the email as well too. Um, so Perry, you're going to the waterfront with a drink. Love that. Uh, Pamela, thank you so very, very much. Heinrich, I am a Royal Caribbean um, crew member, international ambassador on the symphony. That is awesome to hear. Thanks for the videos with the info on the current situation. It's been a nice source to see. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we've had some great reach outs from those who work at Royal Caribbean. So this is really funny. Um, Taylor and I, last September, we went to Royal, the Royal Caribbean headquarters and we got to meet with everybody, you know, from celebrity, everybody uh, from Royal on the sales side. Azamara as well. Azamara. Um, we drilled down into the Galapagos product, which I think is, you know, celebrity and Silver Sea is it's just mind blowing. You, you can't, absolutely. you can't believe what they do in, in uh, the Galapagos for sure. Um, it, it's absolutely incredible. But you know, when we walked around, we had one or two friends there. Nobody had any clue who we were whatsoever. You know, the executives did because we were, um, we set some goals. And by the way, the goals that we set with Royal for sales, um, it was meant to be for this calendar year and we passed it in March and we're going to double it up next month. Um, which is awesome and, and great for them, great for us. But what was so funny is we were supposed to do a ship tour and, you know, due to logistics and COVID um, that got canceled. And so we went back into the office to meet with the Royal Caribbean executives um, and we were walking around the Royal offices and it was hilarious because, you know, a lot of these people had seen our ship tours and everybody had something to tell me, you know, Hey, 
why are you opening up and up every stinking door uh, or drawer? You know, you guys have probably seen that. And what you probably noticed is we filmed a ton of videos before we put them out there and got feedback. So I will open less drawers now. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but uh, I, I still think on that note, I think in the future, we may do one one video in one room where we'll actually have him open up everything. That's true. Just, just well, we gotta do like in, in high speed and you know, yeah. set it to some like you know maybe you know electric you know orchestra kind of thing stuff. But anyway, <laughs> we'll see. Um, all right. Um, so on that note, we're gonna move in here, and I know um, I probably should have done this at the beginning. I apologize, but I still see that there's quite a few here on here that are watching with us. I really appreciate that. We love it. So we'll do a little bit of trivia, and here's the way that we are going to do it today. We will find a better system as we go forward here. But right now, what I have is a uh, ten dollar. Um, gift card to Starbucks or to Amazon because, uh, well, you can buy pretty much everything in the world between the two of them, right? And there's more Starbucks than anything out there. Though um, we would give an, if you're local, we'll give you Augie's we'll, coffee we'll for sure. Augie's coffee or we'll local, convert yeah. that into your favorite local coffee shop. But, you know, it's, it's easier for us to use things that are universal to everybody. So um, on that, uh, the note of the, the opening and closing, I don't know, Taylor had a few questions that were built up there. But uh, what do you think? What should we leave it off with? It, are we going to get it for the top, the first three people that give credit? Yes. Yeah, so, so the first three people that answer in the comments, and that's really easy to see in the comments there what that is. Um, what we're going to do is, is one, I'm going to ask you just to complete the contact form for us. Copy and paste your name. So you're whatever, you know, I, I see some awesome people on here, Pamela Barber, Heinrich, My Wishing Flower. If, if you're one of the winners, copy your name, put it in the contact us. We'll verify it that way. And we'll send that, uh, that gift card directly to you uh, via email. So, but uh, but basically, I think what, what's the first one? What do you want to do? Lead off the first one. Okay, so I think I think we got to lead it off with this one because this will this will show that you you fans. preempted. I'm gonna grab my water real quick. Okay, I'll be right back. One okay. second. So we have. You can talk about me while I'm done. Uh, uh, oh, I, that's fun. Okay, so obviously we get a lot of people that talk about well, but so you're gonna want to be here for the answers. Nope, I don't know the answers. Oh, I'm just okay. kidding. I'll be right back. I just need a water real quick. All right. Okay, so a lot of people say that Danny loves absolutely everything, and for the most part, that's true. But it's actually true because he goes on the ship and he uses everything, everything, and he and he knows where to get everything. And he knows, okay, I have to go to the solarium for this one thing, and I have to go here for that. So he's all over the he's all all over the ship. So you're jumping the gun, Jason. You're jumping the gun. Okay, so <laughs> the first question, the first question is name three things on cruise ships that Danny doesn't like. There we go. I love it. Three things that Danny doesn't like. First three correct answers will get gift cards. What I'll give you right now is what Danny doesn't like when he leaves the cruise. It is such, I, I hate the fact that when I get home, <laughs> and I throw my towel on the ground, nobody picks it up. In fact, I usually get hit in the back of the head by my wife. Got to get all three of them in there. So you can put all three in one comment or all three in three separate comments. Does not matter. But uh, All three in one comment. There we go. All three in one comment. And then I'm going to keep track of it here. So one other things I don't like is I don't like the fact that um, – actually, yeah, no, no, I think – I think there we go. We got a few there. Uh, the cloudy weather doesn't have to do with the – oh, wait, wait. Small curtains, show low ceilings. That That's pretty good. I like it. Ba well, he likes bathtubs. I do. I do like tubs and showers. I just don't like standing in them. Tub oh, shower curtains, tub showers, low ceilings. Okay. Uh, ceilings so, so Chris has nailed the, the no cabinets in, in the bathrooms. I hate that. I get so upset yeah, when true. the only storage is outside because, I mean, you use the bathroom in the bathroom and I want my stuff put away. <laughs> Come on. Let's do it. Okay. So shower curtains. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not getting a basket the first shot. That's funny. All right. Okay. So... Who do we got here? Let's see. We got to go okay, here. I'm going to open this on, on YouTube here so I can look at the first. There we go. Okay. So this is perfect. We've got our winners here for sure. And I am, uh, I'll, I'll pull these here in just a second, but we're, we're actually going to, for that one, I'm going to do five of them. So we'll, we'll do five winners on that. Okay. So the first five on there, uh, we'll get it. Um, and then we're going to turn to another one that, uh, well, Ooh, this is, okay. So this, this is a so, very... so we'll capture this guys. I'm sorry. I don't have it right yet, but I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll make sure and get those. All right. So don't jump the gun on this one. So there is one specific room tour that Danny hates more than any of them. He loves the room. He loves the room, but he hates, he hates watching this one. And part so, of the, so hold on a and, and part of that is because of me. 
so before you give the second half of it, I think we open it up with the first half, which is that. What? That. Oh. Of this. all the tours that I made, me personally made, that I'm on, on the other end of the camera, what's the one that, that and, it, and it, we'll, we'll, we'll give it to you. It's not one of the, it's not one of the full ship tours. No, it's, There are it's, pieces of that. Yeah, it's, it's one a, of the room, it's tour, room, room, room or suite tour. But what do you think is the absolute one? If you've watched it, that I, I, and the reasons are I had to rush through it because we had, we had four minutes to get out before the genie got back there. Um, I was ooh, sweating. Ooh, that's, like, ooh, a, that's, like, oh, that's sorry. Quite, I, okay, that's I gave, quite a clue. My bad. I did give, I gave that away. Um, we have not seen that yet, but we ran through. I missed a couple super important things that Taylor and I loved as kids ourselves. And so we, we absolutely didn't that's get true. there. And then I also had no clue what it was because it had been, you know, a couple of years since I'd been there. Uh oh. So there we go. It looks like Fred got it right there. So Fred, you're, you're, you're going to get that the ultimate family suite, but there was one bit of information that I gave that was completely off in that video, like complete wrong bit of and information. And I totally let him do it. I knew I, what it was. I didn't too. know. I, I, I knew what it was. Eight, and minutes, I just... eight minutes to film a 10 minute video. Give me a break. Hadn't been in the space since the inaugural. Okay. So, but what was it in the ultimate family suite video that I said that was completely wrong, absolutely wrong information and bonus. If you want to double it up, you can also tell me the thing that I missed in the Ultimate Family Suite that is one of my favorite features on any room ever built. So there we go. Let's see. There we go. All right, keep going down there. Big B, we're, I'm going to give that to both of you guys, Fred and Big B, because because it, it did in, in ours, it's clocked on the exact same second. So there we go. Okay, so we've got we've got those two winners now. Um, make sure, keep, keep in mind, if you are a winner and we mentioned it, we'll go back and I'll tell you who it is for the, uh, if you want to check and see who it is on the, um, the first one, um, we'll give it to the first five. Okay. So let's see. Love when he slid down the slide. I got totally stuck on that slide. I'm not going to lie. I am. You, you can hear it. Slide. You can hear it in the video. You can, you can hear him like hit and, and he totally sold it. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, he was hurting. You, you got, <laughs> I left some skin in there. We'll leave it that way. Okay. But, but so anybody, anybody remember, anybody who watched that, I know it's probably been a while for some of you guys, but Ultimate Family Suite. So what we'll do here is if we don't finish this up and you don't answer that, we will leave that out there in the first email that I get with that. Uh, we'll have it, the first contact form that does have the right information on there. But once again, totally wrong information. I said, this is this, and it was absolutely that kind of thing. It was not what it was. So I do love the, caf the coffee maker. Um, VP Jared, the balcony was on the balcony. It was, on, it was down. on. Oh, it was on the balcony there. There we go. There we go. There My we wishing go. flower got it. All right. So yes, <laughs> I had not been on that balcony ever before. Ever before, I had been in the room actually during cruising and, and experienced it a couple times. But there was this thing that was sitting there that I had no clue what it was, and so I I told everybody very confidently that it was a kids' picnic table. <laughs> you know what it is? It's the stairs to the hot tub. In but your, but to be in fair, your defense, in your defense, it you could, could be use used. it. Yeah. You could yeah. use it. You could use it for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I mean, there we go. <laughs> and then the other thing that we missed, nobody's gotten that, but missed completely in the video the is Lego the Lego wall. wall. The Lego wall. The Le How cool know. is the freaking Lego how, wall? I don't know how we missed. That. We played with Legos on the ship with my daughter, but apparently missed the Lego wall. So, but once again, we've learned a lot. Believe it or not, that was our very first Star Class suite that we filmed. Period. End of the conversation. And we frankly had this, we had this new concept with Royal, how we're going to do it. And basically they said, you and, have 10 minutes. And we ran. And we, that was the first one oh, we I, kept running. If you we look at me, I, I've sweat. got sweat pouring down. I, I, there was just nothing. But once again, learned a lot of lessons and each cons consequential one, we, we've done it. But what's been interesting is that we don't always put out the videos in the order in which they've been filmed. In fact, the Navigator was filmed in September. So what you're going to see here is actually the Navigator from September tomorrow yeah. um, there. And there were lots of reasons, you know, we didn't love the way it was filmed because um, it was very segmented and very different. And we learned as we went, because this was once again, our very, very first um, route ship that we, we filmed in this sense. Um, it was so, the first Voyager. That we right, first Voyager class. And so, you know, as we learned, so what's been interesting is people will hammer me over and over again for saying something or doing something. And it's like, well, you're just going to have to sit tight because the next three videos are going to have that as well <laughs> because <laughs> we already filmed it. So yes, my wishing flower, when you book that ultimate family suite, you too can have the Lego wall. But what I really wanted to do was find a way to put Legos on my daughter, like on her back and then push her up against the wall. 
Oh, because there you go. That, I mean, she loves to sit in her swing anyways. I mean, how perfect is that? And it looks right at the video game area. So I don't know. Maybe that's not, yeah. maybe not at sea. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I but, so. Yeah, I don't know. So no. she'll be on the she'll be on the balcony climbing the yeah the, yeah. the netted thing absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to go for another minute. If you don't mind giving us those those five names, they can they can click the uh, um, okay. And if okay. it's a couple so, more than that, give it a couple okay. more than that. We'll, so we'll, we'll do it. So freedom actually got two. Okay, perfect. Freedom, freedom got two. Amazing. Um, so Big B was the second one who got uh, the ultimate family suite. So we'll give him that one too. There we go. So Love it. Freedom and Big B hit us up. And then um, Freedom was one of the ones that got the first. Yep. Uh, Amy, we'll give give one to Amy. There we go. Um, let's see. Type charges. Oh, yep. Yeah. John Hunneman. Yep. Hunneman. Yep. You hit us up. Um, and I'm I'm gonna go up to the uh, the three. Oh. Uh, so for the for the three, we're gonna go with VP Jared for sure because um, you got that right. Um, let's see. Uh, Amy, yes, small safes. Amy got some, she was yeah, the first she, one with small safes. Yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, I would like a safe that I can put my laptop in. Who would have known? Who would have known? Um, so, so Amy, please hit, hit us up for that. Um, let's go. Ooh, Umbra fire, shower curtains, low ceiling, scales. Scales, that's there gotta, we go. That's got to be on Why there, would you yeah. have a scale on vacation? <laughs> what? What? Sir, hey guys, let's, let's have unlimited food and where? Oh, wait, never mind. I do that anyway. All right, let's go. I always, I don't know. I always do it in the gym, whether I, whether I need to or not. And uh, it's almost like a competition with myself. And then Rebecca Green. Rebecca Green. Rebecca Green. Awesome. Small showers, uh, cabinets in the bathroom, and low ceilings. I like the open cabinets. That that that's true. He says that in every bathroom. Absolutely. And uh, um, ne next side, next side. Go ahead and and send that too because he got a different one than anybody else had. Mustard drills, which I do mention that all the time. I you do. I've done over a hundred of them. I would rather be sitting at the we bar. We actually have a video. Which they closed the bar down. We, we actually have a video of us in a mustard drill, kind of like just joking. I prefer a ketchup drill, but that's a whole different story. Okay. Um, and then he also got smoky casinos spilling out into that's the true. into the rest of the ship. That's a good one, too. That, that's a huge pet peeve of mine. And then, um, you know, uh, shower curtains for sure. So um, that's good. And then uh, Rebecca, I think you already said Rebecca. Yeah, um, said Rebecca. Rebecca as well. So I think there we got go. all of them. And I think we ended up doing 10. So if you heard your name on there, throw it out. If you think you heard your name, throw it out and I'll see what I can do for you. But we're going to try to do more, um, more things along these lines. And the more questions we have, the better. But what we're looking for right now is for you to put comments down on when we go back and we sail, the first, you know, there's the obvious stuff. What is what does dining look like? You know, the, what does boarding look like? But what we're interested to know is what are the other things that you want to know, um, so that we can make sure that we make videos about them before and after. Um, what are the topics that you're interested in? Um, and and so, also, also comment down below what parts of the ship tours you really like. Yeah, because sometimes we don't know exactly which part. You know, obviously, the umbrella handoffs are our favorite of a lot of people, um, but a lot of times we don't have Vince there. But put down in the comments what parts of the tours you really like, so we can make sure we focus on those and make sure we get them in every single ship tour. Absolutely. And then what I'm going to do here, uh, we just had a comment on how do we, um, how how do you claim? So I, I thought I had pinned the uh, contact form, but I'm going to put it in right now. So this is being pinned to. The top. So if you just click on that form and submit it, we'll be able to um, we'll be able to check the names versus versus this. So just put in uh, what your name was on there, and we will be happy to take care of you. And it looks like we're going to give away 12, 12 total prizes on that. I get a little excited, and that's fine. I want to be fine. like Oprah. I wish it was cars instead of you. You get a ten dollar gift card. You get, anyway. So but anyway, so, so today we are closing in on two hours. Uh, we're going to wind down here in just a second. Any more questions? Let us know. Um, thanks for putting that in there. My wishing more, flower. More you absolutely did. Cover. More soft. You know what? We're going to have to do. Yeah. I think we're going to have to do a slow-mo video because you did send me a slow-mo obnoxious thing of me. But anyway, yeah. we'll have to do a slow-mo of, uh, of every no, soft no, I, no, I actually did that just on the video. So for those of you guys who don't know, on YouTube itself, if you hit the little gear on the video, you can actually change the speed. And a lot of people have joked about the symphony video because Danny talks so fast. And they, they, say, they say, mm -hmm. like, watch it in 0.75. Thank me later or whatever. So because because mm -hmm. you know he's actually more normal when you run you know, put him at point <laughs> seven five. At the same time, <laughs> putting it at like two x is hilarious. And if you put it at the slowest setting when he hits the soft serve, mm -hmm. it's just great. Anyway, something like that. Yeah. There anyway. you go. Um, so my wishing flower, you absolutely positively did. 
um, JMC, Pride of America. So right now we're working with Norwegian to film our first ships that we really want to film because it kind of closes out a class for us is Bliss. Uh, that's our last yes. Breakaway Plus. Then Pride of America because we sell a ton of it and it's such a unique and awesome product. And then the Breakaway. And then after that, we'll have all of them. And then we're going to really desperately, we've been selling a lot of the three bedroom uh, garden villas. Yeah. And that is the most bonkers room in the history of cruising. 6,000 plus square feet with over 4,000 square feet of deck space alone. So that's insane. Nuts. And, and, and as nuts. well, um, we also want to get all of the quantum class ships because we finished Oasis. We kind of want to finish quantum. I yeah. really like the quantum class. Oh yeah. And that Odyssey, I mean, I, yeah. once again, I mean, for us now, the great news is, you know, we've, we've had enough success and we've shown what we can do enough that we know that we'll be on most inaugurals for all cruise lines. And I, I love, I mean, there's not, obviously the new ship smell is something that's fantastic, but there's nothing quite like seeing where a brand is going than looking at a brand new ship. Yeah. So if we look at the Encore, I love seeing that because it gives me a really good idea of what Leonardo is going to be like, but they're going smaller and where they've had the biggest success is the Haven. So what I'm expecting is a considerably larger Haven um, and uh, you know, maybe not as many of the on the deck, like you know the the, um, the racetracks and the laser tags, but more space dedicated to different things. So we'll see what it is. But we're it, just it really may, excited. It may to do be that. similar to like an Oasis versus a Quantum class vessel. Very much where, so. where, where it's more yeah. it, it's more condensed, but you have a lot of the things that people use. So I think I think they're learning a lot from the Breakaway and Breakaway Plus class ships, and they're going, man, everybody loves this. So let's let's make that better and just include those things. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm super excited for all of that. Um, so last bit, one last question. Why does Royal Caribbean have a smoking section um, next to the kids splash area? So it, it's not intentionally there and it has been moved, um, but uh, different things for different reasons on different sailings. But for the most part, um, cruise lines in general have cut down on smoking considerably. There's usually one or two places outside that you can have it, but different ships, different things. Like what I noticed is I believe the Symphony had a smoking section in the sweet the sweet deck area on one side whereas or maybe the oasis did whereas the symphony didn't, didn't yeah. i'm trying to remember but, but you know what it does what what those areas are dedicated to is specific markets you know there's you find you find more use for it but um any which way i'm not sure but let's keep going a couple other questions and we're heading now uh william enjoyed the live stream thank you so much um there we go wish uh, well. wishing well the, the may how how we may help you just say give me my prize please i answered the question give us the answer that you gave and your name and that's perfect that's plenty for us um, we would love to film the presidential suite on the Mardi Gras for sure. Uh, I will say hi to coach, uh, my dad and cheers to captain Morgan. I know he's having one right now. We will be doing Viking ships as well as uh, virgin. We're really excited. Right. And just in case show. you guys didn't see that Viking did cancel through the end of August, but it makes sense because most of their cruisers are 70 and up just, you know, a, a market that's not going to come back as quick. And so they look at it and try to tell everybody that they're doing it because they're better than other people. Viking likes to do those kind of things and say that in general, but what, what essentially it is, is they don't have demand until then. Um, and so they're going to continue to push it until demand, but we're going to see that with the ultra Lux and the lines in general that cater to an older audience, um, Holland America princess, you know, things along those lines. So um, joy or encore. Well, I, I prefer the joy only because I've been on it so many times and it's, and it's close by and it has concierge well, it doesn't anymore, but anyway, um, so it's gotta be the encore hands down newest um, fantastic ship. And let's see. Wishing you continued success. Thank you. Love the shirt. This is my celebration shirt. So five years ago, I qualified for the first time for President's Club for our company, for Nexion. Um, and uh, I bought this on the side of the road in Hawaii with my dad because I realized I had to go to a couple of luau's and uh, other events. And uh, frankly, didn't have any Hawaiian gear, but I mean, went to Hawaii for it. So I wear this every time we're celebrating. And since we're celebrating 20,000, thought I would do that today. It's a lot of mileage. Miravilia, we actually had that scheduled. We will be doing that later and uh, send a request for Alaska. So um, thanks, Perry. I appreciate that. So we're going to wrap it up today. Hey, the most important comment right there. Can you say eclectic mix in more of your videos? Oh, yes, of course. Oh. Did, have you guys seen our is office? This a, is this an eclectic mix? This is mix an eclectic mix. We have a little pillows? Mexico, France, California. Eclectic mix of doors? Computer was probably made somewhere else. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so it is an eclectic mix. But guys, in an hour and 20 minute video, how many ways can you... Describe furniture. I've tried. Pl I'm going to continue to try. She uses that a lot. Plush, uh, oversized, oversized overstuffed, overstuffed. Yeah. Colorful. <laughs> Come on. It's eclectic. It's eclectic. You got yeah. 50 different styles. It's the definition of eclectic. So, anyways, right, I'll, I'll get, get on that. So, okay. anyway, thank you guys so much. Make sure those of you guys who got the prizes shoot in that contact us form and uh, 
What's up to you again? And thank you guys so, so, so very much. Have a great one, guys. Awesome. Ciao for now. As he sits there, all <laughs> awkward. Yeah, it's like the, the end of the newsreel <laughs> where they're like, no, you got to hit end again. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you later.